unit กีนโอเคโอเคผมซูดแล้วครับเฮ้ยชอบก็ดีบ้า this is general chemistry lecture a general chemistry lecture wow ดีบ้าแต่ละไม่โอเค the first part of general chemistry lecture is อ uh, but before anything else we need to define the chemistry Okay, chemistry is a branch of science that deals with the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. Okay, so if we mean of changes, it could either be a physical change and a chemical change, and it attributed also to different chemical reactions. If there's no changes relating to any compositions, there's no chemistry at all. Okay, something like that because chemistry is more on composition, how they behave in a certain phenomena. Okay, phenomena. Referring to a chemical reaction, okay, something like that. So the clue there is changes, okay. So alteration of the raw material or conversion of raw material into useful products, something like that, so that it could be beneficial to the people, the community, and for you know productivity that will increase the level of uh, lifestyle of the society and can increase also the you know the state or country to country in terms of industrialization you know industrialization okay once the country will be industrialized so a lot of products will be introduced into the market and so that uh, you know the economy will rise and we can go up to the modernization of our technology for the advancement of our uh, lifestyles also Together with some of the discoveries, newly discoveries in terms of science, so we have continuous science research, okay, for our young scientists. Even up to now, we have a lot of young scientists that need support for the new scientific discovery, for the improvement of our, you know, technology or whatever, <laughs> to increase, you know, our level of economy. Okay, ganon, di ba? So it really depends on economic policy, economic policies, something like that, with regards to the environment and also science. Okay, it's gonna be like that: science and environment for scientific research. Okay, ganon. Dapat the government will support for that, okay, because that would be beneficial to all of us, right? Okay, it's gonna be like that. Okay, economically and oh. In, Economically, uh, environmentally, sustainability, something like that. Okay, sustainability means it will endure for how many years? Uh, proven that your research, scientific research, will be uh, long lasting and then effective. How it can be effective? Okay, it will have good results, positive results in the society and in the community for the service. It will be able to to give or to render. <laughs> Right? Ganon! Okay, this is all about the matter. Okay, ganon. Okay, so matter will talk about more and more phases of matter. Ganon. The, you know, the properties of matter. Ganon. Okay. What else? The changes of matter. Ganon. The classification of matter. Ganon. Okay. And chuba 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 And then number three, we're gonna talk about the, you know, the uh, inorganic chemistry, okay, inorganic chemistry, and a little bit of uh, organic chemistry, okay? Actually, guys, the Bluetooth device is really to tell. Hello, mga palangga. Actually, guys, narubat ako, guys. Ako lang kung ano akong voice para makabalo mo lang. Nakakaloka. Diba? Okay, ganan. Nakula na akong tingog. Okay. Matuhok ko niyo, mga palangga. Hi, shout out, ma'am Estinita sa banal. You are watching today. Okay? And happy birthday again to Mark Cherry Bacalso. Okay? Now, in organic chemistry, we have also to study a little bit of organic chemistry. Actually, guys, it doesn't have to, to be like that, that you, you will 
complete PC for the organic chemistry. It has been focused on a little bit in general chemistry. Okay, the introductory part of organic chemistry, talking about hydrocarbons, it's being discussed in general chemistry lecture also. Okay, the preparatory. So organic chemistry is really, uh, you know, uh, a wide a wide array of complexity regarding the you know the combination of carbon hydrogen and oxygen but the basics introductory part concepts are discussed in general chemistry lecture okay with the point organic chemistry then on so what else we're gonna talk about the you know the pure substance then on pure substance the elements and compound okay Compounds. I'm gonna talk about also the you know mixtures, okay? Mixtures, homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures, okay? Homo and hetero, right? Okay. Number five, we're gonna talk about the you know chemical equilibrium, okay? Chemical equilibrium of concentrations, okay? Chemical equilibrium concentrations okay ganon in this part also we can talk a little bit of uh, how fast and slow the chemical reaction really are a little of chemical kinetics or reaction kinetics but in a basics approach meaning not complex you can determine their law you know the rate law the reaction mechanism the rate determining step the initial weight method and then you're gonna be able to have also the ice method there, the initial, the changes, the equilibrium. Then you can compute the concentrations to that knowledge. Okay? It's in the discuss here. Okay, reaction mechanisms gonna Okay, number six, we can also have the topic of uh, exothermic and endothermic reactions or environment, then on. Exothermic and endothermic, okay. So our driving forces to have. Uh, you know, chemical reactions, okay? And you know what's the meaning of exothermic, okay? Exothermic, releasing of heat from the system. Endothermic, absorbing heat to the system, or addition of heat to the system, something like that. If you try to add the heat in the system, okay? So, since it's away from the surrounding, okay, then it will be cold. That is in endothermic. Endothermic environment are cooling system or cold environment, okay? When you release the heat, meaning you release the heat from the system, then it will be thrown to the surrounding. Then the surrounding or the area that being covered is becoming hot. So that's why exothermic environment or exothermic reaction. Then we can apply that also to the chemical reaction. It's at the point mga pananga. So meaning to say the, you know, the exothermic reactions, the heat is always, you know, negative. Okay, delta H. Negative enthalpy change of reaction or heat of reaction. And then also negative gives free of energy. Diba? Ganun siya parati. Negative delta H. Okay? Mamuguni siya guys. Okay? Basta mga spontaneous. Negative din siya. Kasi ha, natin value sa mga energy. Ang ganun siya sa exothermic and thermic. Basta pagin siya kapag mga ideal gas low. Okay? Ideal gases. Okay? And then ideal gases. Okay? Non ideal gases ka tong mga kung may na ideal gases guys na putay ideal solutions ideal solutions talks about the ano uh, you know the dissociation ganan mga electrolytes the uh, ionization ganan weakly ionization partially ionized okay ganan chuba chucho under the shani atong kwan dissociation chemical reaction dissociation okay ganan sya Ang sapa, number 8, katong mga chemical bonding, di ba? Chemical bonding, that is the structure of petrol, and then on. Okay? <clears throat> chemical reactions, I love this. Five types of chemical reaction. What are those? Okay, synthesis and combination, decomposition, combustion, double replacement, and displacement, single replacement, and then the photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is included because it is very, very special. Okay, but still covered with the chemical but other books did not present that one, but others also presented photosynthesis as a separate uh, chemical reaction. Talaga siya. Okay? Stand alone chemical reaction. Na musiparichas of types. Then not. Okay? Chemical reaction. Okay? Then, number 10, expression of concentrations. Then, 
Kapag mga molarity, normality, molality, gano'n-ganon. Percentage by mass, percentage by volume, parts per, parts per million, parts per billion of concentrations, whether it is a gaseous or toxic gases or whatever, or airborne contaminants, it's being expressed there in the expression and concentration of sol solubility. Okay? Gano'n. Here. And number 11, we have the qualitative property. Okay? We need to compute the... Okay, the osmotic pressure, the vapor pressure lowering, the ganon chuba chuchu, and then we have the you know the boiling point, the boiling point elevation, the freezing point elevation, and we need to memorize also the you know the elevate elevating point uh, constant, elevation constant, boiling point elevation constant, the ganon di ba? Oh, point point fifty two, uh, you know, C over M degrees Celsius. Okay, molality. Kita point mga palangka. Okay, meron siya may tabo. Sa okay. Let's see, what else, mga palangga? Okay, then, cryoscopic constant, we should also memorize. Okay, cryoscopic, negative 1.86. Okay, ganon. Diba? Hindi mga palangga. So, muna siya yung hitabo na ng higayuna. Okay? And then, ebulioscopic constant. Point fifty. Tumoto siya ang boiling point elevation constant, ang ebulioscopic constant. Ang cryoscopic constant, tumoto siya ang uh, freezing point depression constant so water did shock because water are, is the basis and then also we also you know study of katong mga kuan phase changes okay lag hindi ka ni phase changes guys katong mga evaporation condensation sublimation freezing boiling point mga ganun siya it's under uh, phase changes okay then we have the heat energies okay heat energies through chemical reactions getting the individual heat of the formation of the reaction and also heat uh, determination through temperature changes we need to be aware that the the qlcpdt guys is the is the heat energy computation based on temperature changes okay so because we have three coverage for that we have a uh, four coverage for computation of the heat energy first computation of heat energy through the chemical reactions Okay, stoichiometric, giving the, you know, heat deformation of reaction and the enthalpy change of reaction that is part of computation of the heat energy. Secondly, computation of the heat through the uh, temperature changes, katong QMC delta T, na it changes sa temperature or temperature gradient. Number three, computation of the heat energy through, uh, through the vaporization, condensation like that. Okay, katumayan nito nga heat is equals to the number of moles times delta heat of vaporization or latent heat of vaporization. So phase changes na na siya guys. Okay, no need to say the changes in temperature, but if there's a phase change given, given the molar heat of vaporization and the specific uh, heat of vaporization, ganun ganun siya, di ba? Or Vaporation, heat vaporization lang siya mga ganun so we can compute for the heat nothing says na na yung temperature na di given we can compute heat without temperature given that is heat calculation through uh, vaporization, condensation and latent, mga latent heat siya chuba chuchu so sa tinungan so di mo may latent heat chuba chuchu meaning latent heat of condensation latent heat of vaporization latent heat of sublimation ganun ganun siya mga phase changes okay Ang pinaka-common na nga nga guys, kaya itong latin heat of vaporization usually. Okay? Kay water, water, chupa, chupa, chupa yan. Okay? Now, also number 14 topics we have now, katong mga kuan, katong mga percentage by mass, pero naman na sa expression ng concentration, no? So, katong mga molecular formula, chemical formula, naming of the uh, elements, naming of the compounds, and then, dito sa mo, laro, laro ang kuan, electronic configuration. Okay, electronic configuration that the atoms, the electrons are arranged in a systematic order in the nucleus, ganun ganun. So the base of our periodic trains uh, regarding to the properties, what will happen to the melting point, boiling point, the, the size of the, you know, <laughs> the elements, too much negativity, ionization, too much guys, if you study this in the whole frame of chemistry, I think it will to 10 years. Okay, if you really have a very strict and detailed study of pure chemistry, uh, you know, five years will not be enough. Really, okay, if you scrutinize really from the, you know, from the smallest particle to the big particle and why this world exists, it started all with chemistry. Starting from the Big Bang Theory, 
30 billion years ago, and then we have the theory of relativity by Albert Einstein through time and space, right? And then, you know, Big Bang Theory, the heavenly bodies are being bombarded with each other. That's why the solar system exists, okay? The sun, the moon, the asteroids, the comets, the galaxy, the Milky Way, the different type of stars like that. So that started with chemistry, okay? Get the point? Because there's a bombarding of the fraternity bodies. Ganun siya, taas ka siyang study. Guys, under pa to niya mata ng science, the chemistry. Because as I told you, chemistry is the central science of all. Okay? Central yun siya, guys. Sa, sa frame. Okay, na siya. Naigagat kayo mga sciences nga nagtutuyok niya katong mga biology, geology, ganun ang physics, biochemistry, medicines, ganun-ganun, di ba? Uh, earth science, uh, metallurgy, ganun-ganun, mining, center yun siya ang chemistry sa tanan. Okay? And then the biochemistry, and then we have the nuclear chemistry, the petroleum chemistry, uh, petroleum, ganun-ganun, under yun siya sa tunga, guys. Ang um, um, chemistry, central siya ang chemistry. Okay? And a lot of science will be under his umbrella. Okay? Muna ito mga physics, geology, metallurgy, ganun-ganun, whatever. Okay? sa environment, sa earth science, and in fact, also the, you know, guys, astronomy. As I told you, okay, astronomy, the, you know, the outer space, okay, the study of the interaction of the heavenly bodies in the outer space, such as the, you know, the solar system, the, the sun, the moon, the, go na siya, mga asteroids, mga comets, mga galaxy, mga Milky Way. And there's siya the study of astronomy, okay, pati ng mga measles, Okay, mga, okay, mga outer space, mga space shift. Okay, under siya dito sa astronomy study. Okay? Sa itong mga pag-asa, under na siya sa astronomy. Okay? Pag-asa for the weather, under niya po na siya sa astronomy. Pa weather, mga weather, mga climate changes, mga ganun-ganun. Okay, under niya po na siya sa, uh, okay, astronomy, mga weather, weather, chuma-chuchu. And then, the parent is the chemistry for that. Okay, the chemistry of the atmosphere. Okay, like that. The lithosphere, biospheres, mesosphere, stratosphere, and then on. Okay, exosphere, okay, and everything. Okay, but the point. I'm not sure, guys. So, so that's, that's why I told you it cannot be finished for, you know, one decade. No, one decade. One decade? How many years in one decade? Ten years, right? How many years in one century? 100 years, right? Diba? Ganun ba yun? Yes, ganun siya. O diba? So, ang sarap yun ang mga akong expert. Kasi ang akong expert is, guys, is chemical reaction talaga siya. Okay? Chemical reaction. <laughs> Mao ba? Yes! Di kayo hiling ang mga numbers. Chemical reaction yun akong gusto. Okay? Nakakaloka. Diba? Oh, what time? Sige, pumunta na si Ma'am Estilita ka sa time. Uy, ang time dili kay Kuan. Tapos na. Sa sadali mo, magkalauna naman siguro. Magkalauna na Ma'am Estilita sa banal. Charot! Pumunta na siya sa time. In fairness. O, di ba? Okay, kung ano yung guys? Very santo. Okay? Good Friday. So, it's about time to repent. <laughs> O mahiruso sa itong mga sala ng mga ang tagbinignit kayo ng ganyo na. Charot. Uy, pakan ako niyo binignit, mga kapatid. Char. Di ba nagbinignit na mo karon? Lami kayo rong binignit. Init ka ayaw. Char! Di ba? Magkutas ako coffee guys ha. Mag face changes at ta from liquid to gaseous phase, evaporation and vaporization. And then boiling point na yun, 100 degrees Celsius. Diba? Diba? Boiling point definition, anybody? When the vapor pressure of the water will be equal to the pressure of the, the vapor pressure of the liquid surrounding in the container, or inside the container. Okay? Meaning we are talking of the the pressure of the gas will be equal to the pressure of the liquid directly. But 
since we are dealing with vapor, that's a gas, right? The vapor pressure of the liquid. Because that, li that vapor is coming from the liquid. Is that the point? That's why we say vapor pressure of the liquid will be equal to the vapor pressure of the liquid surrounding. Or we can say that also pressure of the liquid or surrounding liquid within the container. Your container will be the kettle or your like whatever heater is that. So the pressure of that liquid will be will we it will be equal to the vapor pressure of that liquid, the gas pressure, they will be equal in equilibrium, then boiling point will be attained. So in short, the pressure of the gas or the vapor will be equal to the pressure of the liquid. No wala pa siya vaporize. Wala pa siya mo ba mo turn into gaseous state. So mo na siya itawag boiling point. Okay? There's equilibrium between the pressures of the liquid and the, pres the pressures of the liquid and the vapor or the gas. Okay? Di ba? Boiling point na tawagan na guys ha? Boiling point na po ko o di ba? Ano na po na? Physical separation process. Tsara. Why separation? Ako may separate ang liquid ng gas. No, like separation. Di ba? Nakaloka. Di ba guys? Alam mo gula siya guys. Di ba? Kaya naman tayo kung ano. Di ba mga chemical engineering students out there? Di ba naman tayo ang chemical separation processes? Two ba yan na siya guys? It is a physical separation process and a chemical separation process. Ang physical separation process more on the physical properties, right? Physically, bakit ang mga evaporation, mga ano-ano lang, heating, mga gano'n lang siya ba? Sublimation, condensation, mga phase changes lang siya. But then, ang katong mga chemical separation process, katulad nito ang mga na yung mga chemical reactions, burning, catalytic cracking by introducing a catalyst, an inhibitor, something like that, and then, you know, pyrolysis, and dehydrogenation, mga gano'n-gano, di ba? Hydrogenation, what is thermal cracking, polymerization, may nga na siya guys, mga combustion, mga gano'n-gano'n. So, ako na dito ang mga kuan. Katong mga grabe na dito kayo, mga coagulation, mga nga na ba, mga nga mga changes or alteration or changes in forms of batter. Okay, na grabe na dito kayo na through, ma-change na dito siya, mga color, ma-change ang iyang mga molecules, yung volume, ma-change na dito siya, mga alteration sa form. Ganon. Pero kung mga separate-separate na nga physically, physical separation processes, na siya ka ng mga liquid-liquid extraction, distillation, di ba? Physical na na siya, guys. Okay? Sa iyo, bro, ma-optima na ng chemical, ang chemical, okay, more man siya ka ng nagyay mga chemical changes ba? Okay? Ano yung chemical reactions, mga ganon-ganon, tiyo ba? Okay, kung mga phase changes na ganit, physical separation processes na na. Okay? Naka na mga heating, no? Chemical separation processes po ng heating. Okay, with the burning mo, you can also have the content. There's a lot of changes. You can use the water, 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 you can use the water. Okay? So, heating is the primary example of chemical separation processes. You can separate the water. The vapor, the solid, and the ash, the residue. The water changes the water. When you heat it, it will become black, something like that. Okay? So, muna siya ang mga chemical separation processes. Pwede rin sa titit sura na ni Moshe Alisa, chemical processes. Wala na butang ni Moshe Parayasyon. Okay? Understood naman na siya. Ang descriptive title na nasabi is chemical engineering. Kung ano, but chemical separation processes. That's why we put separation in between the chemical and the processes. But actually, parihura na ang chemical processes, chemical operations, name it. Parang hula gila siya buto sa buto na generally. Sa descriptive title lang ba? Di ba? Ganon. Kasi mo ito ka ito nga. Ano nga sa example, transport phenomena. Muna sa na siya guys, di ba? Nasa ito nga momento. Sa transport phenomena, ito ito nga momento. Transfer, he transfer, mas transfer, ganon siya. Ganda ganon kaya na siya yung mga cover, siya yung mga cover dito. Di ba? Sama ka ng mga grinding. I-grind lang ni mo. Physical separation naman doon na guys, huwag may chemical na na-involve. Okay? So, ito na siya sa katong mga kuan, uh, momentum transfer, katong mga screening, di ba? Screening, mga sapato. Di ba na siya guys? 
Oke, saya akan mengatakan licin <laughs> Licin, licin buhay itu Cerot Oke So, aku mau kumpulkan licin ini Aku mau kumpulkan Ya, aku gala nga yang He transfer you He transfer bang ka ng momentum transfer Yang nanti kuha ng kapit Aku mau transfer guys Oke Maglabad akong kuha Nanti mga kuhaan Mga, sana ini? Mga rate, mga rate law Oke, okay, yeah. dengan ikan timan an mga first degree ah, First order, second order, third order yeah. But lain kisah mga, dengan kisah mga reaction action coba 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 Mesti itu coba mga kuan, he transfer ke Dali tak ini mga i-compute katong Itu mga flow in flow lang siya ba, di ba? Itu mga velocity lang, mga pressure pressure lang Dali kisah i-compute kaya Bernoulli theorem da yun Okay, Bernoulli equation Okay, whereas katong mga Mas transfer, dengan ikan timan an, grabe ka ito siya Charak! Maabot ka itong mga kuan, sa nato eh, mga Four years, oh di, okay, four years, grabe kayo pagka fixed law, fixed law of the future, abot ka ato nga equation, grabe kayo, yeah. dito sa, dito naman kayo mga kuan-kuan naman, mga hit-hit, ratyo pa chuchu, dali, dali na siya, yeah. pinakalisa dito sa heat transfer, kato naman kuan, heat transfer through radiation, kato mag-involve na siya o mga, kato, di ba, kato mga constant-constant, nga grabe na kaayo, taas kayo yung constant, charot! <laughs> sa radiation ba, di ba, Mo listen niya. Ang katong conduction dili kay listen kay 4 years na man to, 4 years law of conduction. Da sayo to siya. Mo sayo na gamay ba para sa radiation. Mas grabe dito mas transfer guys. Okay? Kaluka. Unit 3 of okay. unit para sa guys. Samo ka ayo ang cuma kon ko an pa. Nga si ko pay. Mga kaya ko. Di ba? Sino mo makarelate? Uy, huwag may chemical engineering na students Ako sa akong viewers Mga BS chemistry na Joy Charak! Sarap lang Sarap ka Huwag mo makarelate ako ng hitag Kung pinatas akong vlog Yung kaong kukuan Hello guys! Ano yung asap ako kami sa inyong atubangan? Wow! Coffee for life! Shout out kay From Luchi Baldun. Wow, this is our colleague here in, you know, RCC. Okay, thank you so much for watching, Mr. Mark. Very active, delicious, always at Charot. Okay. What I mean is, mag-operate siya sa mga ano, always at requirements na lang ba? Okay. Oh, shout out to you, Mark the Baldun. You are watching. Oh my gosh, sino pa ba na siya? Gibali lang niya ang Mark Cram. Charot. Okay. Let's dagan din topics na kung brain cells, maglipugos kong unahon. Really? Okay. Maraming pasalamat siya ko ni Lord God nga. Through basic concepts, guys, noon, ipasarge ko sa board examination. Okay, okay. Kung wala ko yung mga basic concepts, murag ba siya ko unta. Charot! Katurang na daog sa basic foundation, guys. Di ba daog sa practical math or whatever. Di ba? Nandang ka nagpunto sa yung brain cells ba nga mga ideas niya. Mugawas na siya, no? E di gagawas na niya kung maka-encounter ka mga questions and problems. Di hanap to siya mugawas sa yung brain cells. Na nagpunto na siya sa yung utok. Ana. Okay? Yan muna, tungkol sa kadagan siya, nasa yung utok, murag mong sakit sa di mong ulo ba? Huwag mo na siya kagawas. Okay? <laughs> Dapat mo gawas dyan ang kuan, ang knowledge power from your brain cells. Kaya yung mong neurons, dagan pa kito, nagtuyok sa yung kuan, sa yung ce cerebral part of your brain. O, cerebral, di ba? Di sa cerebellum, di rinapit. Yan na rito, mga neurons, dito, yan na yung mga electric impulses. Diba? Without electric impulses, wabaya ang neurons. So, mabuang ta. Kaya, ang kanang electric impulses, mamuli mo sa mga neurons mo. mo Kuhaan mo na siya message. Mo-deliver of message sa mga vital organs. Yan, dilisan na siya mo-deliver of uh, message kung wala ang mga hormones. Ka, ang mga hormones, mo na siya mga reporter sa atong brain cells. Hormones, substances that will direct messages to our brain cells. So that there will be coordination and interaction of the movement of the particular vital organs in our body to perform regularly what is being demanded for them. 
24 hours per day. For example, kidney. And then the hormone will say, kidney, you do a lot of things. You will go, you go to urine now. And then he will, he will dictate the brain. He will go to the brain and send the message. And then after sending the message, he will push the kidney to take the urine. Okay, so meaning to say, the, the, the substances we eat every day is very, very important because these are the hormones that will act as a messenger between the brain cells, okay, and our vital organ. And if we don't have that, the important nutrients in our body, then there will be a malfunction of our vital organs' uh, communication. Okay, so muna mabuang. Okay, there's no proper coordination and communication na between the brain cells and to the anatomy structure in our body. Baka na mga kidney, liver, uh, heart, uh, excretory system, respiratory system. So muna di kakasabot sa inyo. Sakit ka, sakit ang buko-buko, ganon. Sakit mo o ulo. So, dapat ang hormones mo function dito siya properly and regularly to send, to to wait for the messages, for the, to send messages to the brain and then the, the brain will dictate what to do. Ganon! Oh, diba? Muna siya, ang rules of hormones. Hormones are uh, chemical and biological substances driven by the food we eat. Okay? That either liquids or solids. Okay? Muna, kung magpatakapotag ka o ng atong hormone, mo Feel your put siya. Muna mag-develop siya diseases. May mula si brain. Kung hindi ka na, ay nga, makadaot mo na ni mo. O ganon. Communicate na si brain cells ni hormones. Ano ba? And then, hindi mo na mo mastadihan kung you don't know the functions and behaviors of your anatomy structures through physiology, the chemistry of substances inside our body. And then, through that, after na, Kung sobra na kaayo ani nga food, ano, madaot na ka. Mung study epidemiology, kay i-control na po ni mo ang diseases. I-prevent ni mo ang diseases. Masakit. Okay? Muna, if you want to learn about the, the whole frame of, you know, to be healthy, you need to study anatomy, physiology, chemistry. Okay? So that, so that this disease is an epidemiology for a good shock. So that you will extend your life in this earth. Okay? If you want to become 200 years old, okay? Since you know already what's what's the healthy food you want in your life, it, it depends on your lifestyle already. Okay? So actually, that is going to be the case. But not also, all people are highly technical or highly theoretical, right? So we cannot expect that also. So that's why we need to educate or we need to vlog like this for, you know, sharing the academic information. Diba? Muna kita wag uh, social media influencer because we are giving some tips and knowledge in which dili siya common in yung marinig. Ano dito guys? May technical information. Muna siya, social media influencer. Okay. For example, you don't love science and you hear me, ah, then you can learn something. So, na-influence na, na ako ang tao. That's why, influencer. You get the point? Since this happens to the social media, that's why social media influencer. Okay? It doesn't have to be uh, celebrity, product endorser, politician, or whatever. You have a very big role in the government. It's not to be like that. Even though you are an ordinary citizen, you can be a social media influencer. Okay? If you have your talent, academic talent, or whatever talent that God gave to you. Okay, pwede na kang social media influencer. Charot! O, oh, diba? Ganon. Okay. Ganon sa kong coffee kasi yung ano niya. Akong brain cells i-dictate. Ang hormones i-dictate yun. No, mauni, mauna. Okay. O, saan niya ang hormone, guys? Okay, charot. Endorphin hormone, no? Ganun na. Serotonin. Melatonin. Charot. Diba? Endorphin. Adrenaline. Adrenaline hormones. Ano dyan, ano dyan. Ako tumakas ang hormones. Uy! Ano saan natin? Mapalangka. 
Nagbiochem jug ko. Char. Diba? Okay guys, buhatan ko yung example ha. Balik ko sa akong favorite na kuan topic. Okay, saan sa akong favorite nga topic? Uy, ingon man ko ninyo ngamun yung akong favorite, diba? Adi, sige dala. Mga naging ka guys, ah, okay. Question number one. Okay, ganun. Charap. Determine what kind of chemical bond. So, I will put ha, my example dali, Ari. Okay. Mga naging ka yun, okay? Number one is, ano, saan ba ninyo eh? CH. Wala. Nakali nga ni guys, CH. Sure ka, CH. Hydrocarbon, di ba? Number two is hydroxyl functional group. Number three is, ano sa mani? Di ba klaro, uy? Ah, hydro, hydrofluoric acid. HF. Di ba hydrofluoric ni siya? Okay, number four, calcium, calcium sulfide. Di ba siya sulfide? Sulfide. Sulfide. Number five, magnesium oxide. Number six, I have what? Chlorine gas. Number seven, hydrobromic. Okay, hydrobromic. Number eight, what's it called? Nya iodine bromide. Ah, iodine bromide bonding nisha. Not this is not really a chemical reaction, right? Number nine, water. And number 10, carbon monoxide. So, the question is very straightforward. What is the type of chemical bond involved from 1 to 10? Muna itong isang. Muna ang ato examination para mong higay yun na. Ganoan. So, ang muna itong ipagpukan. So, banat-banat. Charot. Okay, CH. Ang unawin mong The first thing to do, Bislish talaga, no? Bisaya plus English. Okay? Okay, mga palangga. So, the first thing to do, guys, is to determine if it is existent or non-existent. If existent, then we proceed. Like that. Okay? Meaning to say, to say, this is a real-life scenario. Real-life scenario, meaning this exists in the actual these chemicals in the laboratory we can use them for synthesizing uh, some chemicals to produce useful products or some of it also will become our raw materials to produce product or our ingredients or our compositions to produce products things like this are real life scenario meaning to say in reality we can use this okay not non-existent because the non-existent is it's somewhat like hypothetical Okay, meaning not exist in reality, just used for the purpose of discussion in order we can understand. Okay, that's non-existent. So here, be sure it is existent. Okay, something like that. Get the point. Oh, CH. Ganon. Existent or non-existent? Number one. Think CH only, carbon hydrogen, existent or non-existent? More na akong question. Right. Di ba guys? Marisod mo no? Okay. Carbon hydrogen. So the first thing to do is if you cannot name it properly, and it, it looks, it sounds like awkward. So that is non-existent. Now, if it is a non-existent, try to picture out other type of chemical reaction. Would it be a chemical bonding only or chemical dissociation reaction only? And the ordinary and the usually the chemical reactions. Because it's ganon ganon siya para tayo guys. Three manas siya. So we have a different types of you know chemical reaction. Could it be the normal or regular chemical reaction? And then pasya tungo lima ka type of chemical reaction. Then kung isip kami na mga chemical dissociation reaction. Iimo lang siyang i-dissociate to produce ions. And we have also the chemical bonding na iban-band lang nimo siya. Okay? I-connect lang nimo siya. What will be the behavior if we draw the orientation in this chlorine, bromine, like that? Take the three frames. Okay? To understand. Now, if it really 
covers there, then that is non-existent. What is CH? Do we have a chemical formula like that? CH, what's that all about? Is that, is that uh, a methane? Is that a, uh, you know, propane or liquefied petroleum gas? Is this a polymer? Is this a sugar? Is this a protein? Something like the, uh, the first thing come out in your mind to pitch when you see that kind of symbol or formula or something like that. Okay, ganon. So number one, guys, is non-existent. Okay, there's no CH alone because there are charges. Charge of hydrogen is one, charge of carbon, then why there's no subscript? Okay, this is non-existent. Then if we try if we try this to be existent, we need to put dash in the center. Dash. Meaning carbon and hydrogen chemical bond only. And the technique is if you see a, a small dash or a small underline in the center between one element over the other. That's chemical bonding already. Meaning to say, you have to illustrate the chemical bonds of these two elements and orienting the number of electrons or the balance of electrons to show what's going to be happening when they react with each other. Okay? But there's no dash at first. I just put to make it existent. <laughs> okay? Nakaloka. Diba? So, as I answer na to Ani. Okay, yung ta, determine ta, ha? What kind of chemical bond? So, number one is non-existent, right? Meaning, AKS, whatever form. Okay? Now, if we try to make this a chemical bond, this a chemical hydrogen, carbon and hydrogen bond. Okay, now may dash. Okay? So, carbon and hydrogen lang. Ganun. By the way, guys, dash, it hyphen is just the same hyphen. H-Y-P-H in English. H-Y-P-H-E and hyphen. And a dash, D A S H, meaning a small underline that connect the chemical bond, or anything when you encode something, right? In English grammar, you have to put a, a, a small underline. Meaning to say, for example, if I have a, to say, uh, there is a two-day affair of a basketball game in Riyadh City, so you, mean, you put a dash between two and a day because that is a correct grammar. If you don't put dash between the two and a day, it will become a wrong grammar because that is two, two meaning plural, that is two days. Either you will say two days basketball game event or either you will say two day basketball event but you have to put dash between the two and the day. If you try really to insist the singular form of the day, day singular form, days plural. If you want to insist the day to put beside the two, you have to put dash. Say, two-day affair. You will never say two days affair if you will put the dash. If you remove the dash, then you will say two days. Get the point? So that's the rule in English. That's why you did in the, you will see that in the headline of the newspaper, like the, the caption. That's why you never say a plural attached to it because there's already a hyphen or a dash after the number. Okay. Get the point? If you say three month, it, that's wrong grammar. If you want to be correct, three dash month. And then connect your description. You say three month uh, study of chemistry. Or three month inspection of workplace. Meaning to say they will do the inspection for three months. But there's no letter S after the month because that's the English grammar for it. If you will put the dash on the hyphen. Okay? So you can learn that also in a, uh, advanced technical report writing and also in journalism subject in English. Okay? Ato na siya ibutang kasagara sa mga headline, sa mga caption, sa mga title, sa articles or sa, you know, in the newspapers like that or any, you know, any online news uh, platforms, whether it is, uh, you know, it's, uh, mainstream media, mainstream media or social media or whatever. Okay, you want to captioning and put a title. If you want to really connect the, the number and the word. Okay, like that. You want to put it So, you can connect the dash sa carbon and hydrogen. I can relate to what I'm Okay, so kung ibutan o gas niya, banding-banding man ang carbon ng 
Kunci dengan non, di ba. Seperti ini, let it go to guys. Charot. Okay, now take it mana pelan tak kungitan. Charot. What is the behavior of carbon and what is the behavior of hydrogen? So we identify first identify the properties, the the behavior, the nature, the characteristic before undergoing the chemical bonding or the chemical reaction because so that we can have an idea what's going on. What will be the expectation for you for this carbon? What will be your expectation of this hydrogen? Okay. Now I will ask you this: What is a, is carbon a metal or not metal? That's the first thing to do. You should, you should classify if it's a metal or non-metal. Because in that way, you can easily have the chemical reactions properly if you know if it is a metal or a non-metal before it will undergo to become a compound. Okay? Muna siya ipasok sa itong brain cells na dapat makabako na metal ba siya or non-metal so that we can really perform the, the best or the suitable chemical reaction that we are expecting well. Something like that. Is it the point? And what is really hydrogen? Is it metal or non-metal? Now, carbon atom somewhat confusing, right? Because carbon is very, you know, carbon is very reactive. Okay, like that. So that's the basis of hydrocarbon chemistry. Okay, in petroleum industry, oil and gas industry, like that carbon is the basis for that. Okay, then that's why we have hydrocarbon. The CH mainly is for hydrocarbon. Okay, like that. Hydrocarbon industries or dealing with hydrocarbon chemistry, okay, like that. Now take a look at carbon and hydrogen. Are they both than metals? One of them is metal. Okay, so the the you know a little bit confusion with carbon only is somewhat. It will yield a solid substance after burning. Okay, you know, for example, if you see a fire in your uh, environment, whatever, when you walk into the road, or in the, you know, in the aisle, <laughs> in a different access or whatever, right? If you saw a fire and then, the, for example, the wood material is burning, it produces a black ashes or residue. Okay, the first thing due to your observation, observation, a plain observation, you just, you're just looking it, it, and you did not conclude, you did not uh, uh, having a uh, interpretation. Just look only that's observation. Okay. Now, after you look that there's a black residue and ashes, you have now the inference. The inference is just the same with the observation. But the inference you observe at the same time you think, why is this solid? Why there's not so much why in your brain cells? So that's inference. Okay. So meaning inference is higher than observation. Because after observation, you will try to, you know, to to find a theory that connects to that, what you see, okay? I will say, why is this a solid after I see the, the black ash or whatever? Ah, because carbon, like that inference already. You connect now that principle, the theory, the concept, like that. Then after having your inference, you can initially guess that is hypothesis. Meaning to say, if it is... Ah, if this is really true, if it is correct, if it is false, if, if it is valid or not, is this a re is this rea in reality or not? So you have a, a guess now if it is really existing or what. Ganon. Muna na siya hypothesis. Your initial educated guess for that particular what you see or what you saw, something like that. Okay, ganon. Now, so. Carbon will yield a solid substance in the ashes, right? You will interpret first. That's your hypothesis. Ah, this is really a, a solid because there's a ash like that. There's no liquid. So that is your first hypothesis. So you don't have yet your conclusion, which is the last step. Okay? You get the point? Or your generalization. Generalization, conclusion, and summary are just the same in meaning in scientific research. Okay, like that. Ah, like this, blah, 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 so on. So how can you prove your hypothesis? You can either do sampling. You can get the sample and go to the laboratory to analyze further. That if it is really a, a solid, really this carbon all about, something like that, okay. Or you can do another thing by your own. 
experimenting by your own you will go to the kitchen and you will compare also other you know substances there the behavior you can do a lot of things just to prove your hypothesis before doing a conclusion you have to confirm first okay to prove that it is valid okay if you prove your uh, if you prove your co uh, claim not complaint if you prove your claim c l a i m if you claim that it's gonna be like this, like that, like that, you have to confirm first before circulating something like that to the public because it will cause a misinformation to the entire society if you release immediately without confirmation because it should be validated first, something like that. Because you have now the hypothesis pata talaga siya. And now, if that is plainly words lang talaga siya, statements, opinions, and views, that's the time you will go to different sources, okay? To, to research, oh, uh, reference 1, reference 2, reference 3, reference 4, source 1, source 2, source 3, source 4. After your cross-examination of different sources, you found out, Ala, it's not inconsistent out of your four sources, okay? The four sources tells a uh, fact, and the other one is false okay so you may judge ah this is true because the the out of four three are are aligning with each other and they are independent you know independent group they are not related to one way or another so we need to say they matches their theories and principles like that so ah this is fact something like that now if you are only researching one source, for example, I mean, we will talk about, we will take uh, politics, okay? If you will try only to get source, for example, uh, from GMA7, without validating that to another sources, let's say. So how can you prove that it is really a fact? In fact, you're using only one source. Are you sure that that's... Their source is valid. How about fabricated and falsified? Something like that. Okay, you need also to gather Rappler. Okay, Phil Star, Metropolitan, like that. Okay, you get the point. Now, if you see another also source that is also independent, not aligned with the government or whatever, and then, ah, oh, why like this? They are not really, you know, matching something like that. And the statistics doesn't align statistics meaning the data the figure the numbers like that you will you will add more sources okay at, at the time 10 sources then different and you found out that this jv7 cnn just the same but the, the data is not the same with the other independent group okay so we need to say this mainstream media is delivering false news even though they are the popular and the famous you know uh mainstream media things like that what what i'm trying to point out is that you will never de de declare your claim as fact if you will never research different sources okay now if you know if i am a bbm sara for example i don't have to believe immediately okay for what they are sending to me i have to validate that first i will also try to get the sources of the the dila one or the other groups, then I have to, to collate if what is really the true. So you will never <laughs> say immediately that it's not that it's a false, it's a fact based on only your own conviction. It's not like that. Okay? You need to gather all the sources before saying the people are believing fake news. Are you sure they are believing the fake news? Maybe the fake news is like it's fact. You get the point? Things like this. Because it's the mind, it's the mentality and the perception matters a lot in your conviction. Okay? You get the point? So you have to gather sources. It's just the same like this. Okay. So the carbon, going back to chemistry. Now the carbon, you will see at first solid. But now, in the theory, that is not a metal. That is not metal. See? That is non metal, the same as oxygen, hydrogen, chlorine, bromine. It is the process and the reaction that made that solid later on. You get the point? The, you know, the, the reaction that made it a solid later on. But naturally, it exists and that is not a metal, something like that. There's a conversion already because this is chemical reaction. Expect that there will be a change in alteration of the phase. P-H-A-S-E. 
meaning solid, liquid, and gas. Maybe si carbon, nan metal siya, but bad then after, it will consume it. Ganon. Diba? Ganon siya. Get the point? Just like water, when you heat, it will become a gas later on. So, th these are the things. These are the conclusion already. That you prove it already, something like that. Okay. Now, going back to the carbon and hydrogen. So, you know, say that carbon and hydrogen are all non metals. Okay. You will never say carbon is metal because sikat kayo siya, mga carbon ashes, mga coal, coal, charcoal. That is usually made up of carbon atoms. Di ba, mga 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 now, ang hydrogen mga palangga is the lightest element in the planet Earth. Light. Pinakagaan siya talaga out of 118 elements in the periodic table. And this is discovered by Mr. Henry Cavendish, a scientist who discovered the element called hydrogen. Okay? Any questions so far, mga palangga? Nothing. Now, Hydrogen, if you try to picture out the properties, na siya yung atomic number mo 1, that's actually mass, num mass number na 1 point something, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Okay? Ganon. Same as oxygen. Okay? Now, si carbon, guys, na siya yung upat ka kung ang balanced electron na outermost shell. Ganon. Si hydrogen, usa na dyan na siya yung taon. Ganon. Okay? So, i-connect mo ang band between the one electron that will, uh, you know, that will accept, okay, the carbon, or the carbon will accept. Actually, they are, you know, what people is one symbiosis with each other. Symbiosis relationship meaning they are giving and take with each other. Because they are both non-metals. They are not with polarity. Okay, na different siya of charges. Na negative mo sa positive. But these are all positive. Positive ang charge of hydrogen. Positive charge also on carbon. So there's no polarity exist here. There's no polarization. Meaning to say, this is not a unique compound. This is molecular covalent compound because most the two having the same charges. Okay, now magbabalin siya. So the, there will be a movement of electrons between the two. Okay, meron siya chemical band. Tararat, ganun ko, sarang siya kaband. Okay. Why yung sarang kaband mga palangga? Because there's no other electrons of hydrogen. Only one. Okay. Is that the point? But in carbon, there's a lot left. Okay? One, two, three. Mm. So in short, guys, you can never see a book that's saying na duha ang yang giban sa hydrogen. Because hydrogen usa, I don't know, carbon na tulog ka mukhang yung giban sa hydrogen. It can never be happened because hydrogen is only one electron. Okay? You can never see a book like that or an explanation in the theory of different chapters in general chemistry all about like that. Okay? It's nothing. Okay? Nothing. Is that the point? It's only one single bond if you deal with hydrogen. The remaining will be the excess of that other element that try to share his or her. Lalaki ba ni or babay ba ni siya nga kuhan ang metals? I don't know. Charot. Okay, magamit kong his and her. Charot. Third personal pronoun, right? Has, her, him. Okay? Sa English. Okay, sa akong gamito na ni her na lang. Oh, it na lang, it. Referring to a thing. Okay, at it and them also then. Okay? Because it can be used to specify things like that. Okay? So, this, what about this? This carbon has only one band with hydrogen. So, how many excess and paired electrons mga palangga kong hitan? We have three unpaired electrons or unshared electrons or three lone pair 
lone electrons, meaning solo flight. Lone is just the same with alone, okay? You get the point? So three lone, lone pairs of electrons. But since this is electrons, only electrons, not pair. Because a pair, you will multiply by two, right? Three lone electrons. Ganon. Okay? Now, I'm question, if we try to, if we try to this non-existent to be existent, because we put the dash. Now, what is this kind of chemical bond? Okay? For this. Okay? This is a polar covalent bond. Number one. Okay? Because we try it to be existent now. Okay? So, polar covalent bond. Why? Because the electrons are not completely shared with each other. And then also, the valence electrons in the outermost shell of hydrogen and carbon is not equal also. This is the second reason. Apart from electrons are not sharing completely. Okay? Ganon. Okay? And the charges also... The charges are not equal. Okay? The charge of hydrogen is 1 and the charge of carbon is 4. So there's a lot of reason why it become a polar covalent bond. The carbon and hydrogen bond. Okay? Like that. Now this, guys, this polar covalent bond of carbon and hydrogen will deviate the hydrocarbon theory. You know hydrocarbon theory? The carbon chain. Because... Uh, generally, in theory in organic chemistry, all hydrocarbons, chemical formula, X, okay, meaning to say, without involvement of other elements, CH should be the guys, ha? carbon atom and hydrogen. Kato mga methane, methane, ethane, butane, propane, pentane, heptane, hexane, octane, nonane, decane, do decane. Like that. Yeah. Octane is a gasoline. Methane is a natural gas. So there's a broad name after that chemical formula and the, and the other more. Okay, something like that. Now, these are all non-polar. Okay? Non-polar covalent band. Now, we believe siya ang CH. Polar. Because as I told you, this is non-existent. Okay, if you try that to be existent, your answer will be polar covalent band, in which it doesn't match the theory that all hydrocarbons are non-polar covalent band. So, there's no CH talaga na chemical formula in the book, it will be just okay if you put hyphen and dash in the center. C does H meaning carbon and hydrogen bond only. You get the point? So, what I see, H ha. Ako lang ibutan ang dash para mo. Mo kung siya, mo existent. Okay? So, kung mo existent siya, may mo siyang polar covalent bond. Okay? Ganon. Okay. What is the other uh, identification? Yes, it's only three, right? We go to number two. Hydroxide. Nakakaloka ang hydroxide, di ba? Okay. Hydroxide, what kind of chemical bonding is this? Okay. The first, existent ba ang hydroxide or not? Of, of course, existent siya talaga. Because it is found in basic substances. Especially the alkaline solutions, mga soda, soda drinks. Something like that have OH already. Mga bases. B-A-S-E-S. -E the opposite of acid is a base. Okay? Na siya OH. Oxygen and hydrogen. Atom na ganon. Okay? So, it's essential. What kind of bond? Actually, uh, for the purpose of discussion only, but I can determine what type. For the purpose of discussion, we need to explain. Okay? So, OH negative. Okay. May saan siya? So, first you have to think. First, if it is a molecular, molecular or a ionic. Okay. Now, if it is a molecular, ganang-ganang chuba chucho. Okay. We will focus to the covalent bonding. Okay. And if it is ionic, we will focus on the ionic bonding. Katong mga dipole-dipole, ion-ion interaction, ganang-ganang. Or the van der Waals weak forces types of chemical or something like that. Now, oxygen is a non-metal, hydrogen is a non-metal. Obviously, this is a molecular compound. And since this is a polyatomic anion with negative charge, instead of saying molecular compound, you will say molecular polyatomic anion. Get the point? 
Though this is a compound composed of hydrogen and oxygen, there's a charge negative. So all compounds that have a charge negative is all polyatomic. Okay, polyatomic and ion. So I will say hydroxide polyatomic, polyatomic and ion. Or I will say molecular polyatomic and ion. Okay, but if you want to be general, just say hydroxide functional group or hydroxyl group. Okay? So there's a lot of name you can put in this OH as long as you validate it correctly. Okay, validate. Meaning it can be accepted. Okay, when you describe something, it can be accepted, of course. Okay? Like that. So OH, so oxygen and hydrogen chuba chuchu. Ganon. Okay, diba mga palang nakungitan? <laughs> diba? So, oxygen, valence electrons din pa mga palangka. Okay? So, before going further, guys, we need to differentiate what is a valence electrons and the normal electrons without any description. Differentiate a valence electron and, an, and the electron only. No description meaning no adjective prior to the electron term. So meaning, this is not the same because there's a descriptive, you know, description. Okay? So I will say balanced electrons and versus electrons only. Okay? So now actually difference. I will tell you the difference. Okay, guys. Ganon. For example, guys, uh, you know, I have how many rows in periodic table? I think seven rows, diba? And the row represents the family or the period. And the vertical represents the group. Okay? Like that. Now, the rows, R-O-W-S. Dili siya rows na buwak ha? Okay, like that. And then sa number, for example, sa number five, I have to take, ano lang siya? I have to take rubidium. Okay, rubidium. Basta mo ng rubidium sa Shotero, eh? Hello, ka. Okay. Rubidium. Si Rubidium na mapalangga. <laughs> si Rubidium na asya sa ikalima nga row. O, oh, diba? So, kung na asya sa ikalima nga row, si Rubidium is enjoying the fifth energy level, okay, outside the nucleus. Because nucleus is the central part of the atomic structure. Okay? Like that. So, how can I draw how can I picture out this rubidium? Something like that. Okay, mga palang akong hitad. Ganon. Hello, shout out. Digin yun, Lipangong Jimmy and Mr. Eden no 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 Nokan. Thank you for watching mga palangga. Okay, salamat kayo ni Tanan, mga silingan ko. And then, like this. Tapos sa mga palangga, ha? Ako sa nishing ipo ka, i-charge mga palangga ka na po. Diba siya i-charge yung tiktak? Charap! Nakaloka. Tanin lang siya. Char. Okay, live na live si June sa science vlog, academic information. This is not politics. This is not sports or you know whatever. Shubes chica galore. Okay, this is only. This is academic information sa mga ano mga studios people. Okay, studios talaga. Yap. How can I say this? Chat. Nakaloka. Okay. Pwede lang siya, guys. Hindi mo just ikuan si Mr. Eden no kung mga palanda ang hintan. Itutok daw lang ako siya. Tsara! Okay, so. Mas ako na siya pagtutok. Uy, char. <laughs> nakaloka mga palanda. I'm wearing violet shirt. Wow, nakaloka. Yeah, do I look attractive today or not? Nakakaloka. Wait. Oh. Yeah, ganun siya. Mas ako niya siya pagtuyok ko eh. Ibig ka ba magtuyok mga palangga? 
Nakatalo ka di ka mao. Pwede siyo ka maudo. Sa aming pagtuyo ko eh. Ana, ganun. Ganun. Di ko mao guys ko eh. Ang sarap siya pagtuyo ko eh. <laughs> Rotate, balik ko ka mao. Tinagsubod na mag-vlog ko eh. Mahalo ko makuhan sa oras. Tsara! Diba? <laughs> Yung kamot yun ko guys. Uy, pag nabuhi na ni. Diba? Pag nabuhi na kaan kayo yun na. Tsara. Nakakalubok ka. Ano lang uy? Diba? <laughs> Wala uy, nakakalubok ka. Ah! Uy! Buyam. Ano lang mga palangga? O diba? Oh, maliwanag pa sa sikat ng araw. This is your science vlogger, YouTube content creator, social media influencer, Sotero. Ganun. Going back to my discussion. But I think the phone is very far, right? Okay. How many steps? One, two, three, four. Four steps. Ganun. Okay. What is the difference between valence electrons and electrons? Okay. First, okay, electrons is a negatively charged particles, okay, meaning negative shell. And then it is rotating in the outermost uh, shell of the nucleus, but not necessarily the last shell, okay. But valence electrons, it is really in the outermost, meaning outermost, meaning superlative, English, adjective superlative, because there's a word most. Okay, remember, uh, more, like that, most. Okay, the most is the superlative, right? More than, uh, ganun, greater than, uh, okay, like that. Most is more on the highest degree na talaga siya. For example, most powerful. Okay, for example, so Taro is powerful, but this guy is more powerful and the other guy is most powerful, meaning superlative, higher degree. So if I will say outermost shell, meaning of all the outer shells, for example, if the aluminum, aluminum the only one, oxygen, the eye, if the oxygen have so many uh, uh, sh outer shells, okay, like that, just like the solar system or gets like that, okay, we have nine planets, that is the shell, the circle. Same also with the, we try to put that in atomic structure, the same like that. Okay, the last shell or the last orbit will be the outermost shell. So, the electrons, the electrons are occupying there is what we call valence electrons. Okay, in the outermost talaga siya. So, you will, so if you try to apply that in the inner shells, you will be wrong because your electronic configuration will be already wrong. And the valence electrons are the electrons represented in our periodic table, not the inner shells. Okay, you got the point. Di ba akong example ganun nga si Rubidium? Okay, hinailig mga kabuok. So, N, energy level 1, energy level 2, energy level 3, energy level 4, energy level 5. The electrons occupied in the energy level 5 are, these are all the valence electrons of Rubidium. And you have to count that one. So, that is the valence electrons. So, if you will say only electrons, you will count all electrons the inner shells from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and some that also. That is the definition only of electrons. But valence electrons is the last electrons filled in the outermost shell or the last energy level. So that's the difference only between valence electrons and electrons. Okay? So you have to be careful. Okay? Something like that. They are not the same. Now, if oxygen have six valence electron in the outermost shell okay like this one two three four five let's say here five six okay ganon diba ganon mga palangga and then only the one hydrogen will get shot very airy ta da da hmm ganon ganon diba now Ang hydrogen, o saan nagig siya, guys? Okay? Because one electron in the outermost shell. So, kunik na siya one single band. Okay? One single 
ban. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, balance electrons. Now, their unshared is five. Okay. Ganon. Five. So, you will say also that this is a polar covalent band because there is an unshared sharing of electrons. There are five unpaired electrons of oxygen. Now, mga palangga, how can you say that there's a negative charge here? Okay? Like that. Because OH is just a negative charge. You get the point, mga palangga? Now, this is another theory. You need to introduce the formal charge computation. Ganon. Formal charge of oxygen and formal charge of Hydrogen. So, what is the formula of formal charge? Because we are dealing with OH, that is a charge, man, God. Okay? You get the point? If no charge, there will be no uh, issues at all. But there's a charge, negative one. So, formal charge of oxygen will be the valence electrons of oxygen in the outermost shell, 6, minus the closed parenthesis of the number of band of delivered by oxygen, which is 1, because there's no other, right? Okay, one. And then the unpaired electrons of the oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, five. Now we will say six minus six. So the formal charge is zero for oxygen. Okay, now compute for the formal charge of hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen mga palangga kung hitad is, uh, you know, valence electrons, one. Minus, close and open parenthesis, the band of hydrogen to the oxygen, 1. And shared electron is 0, right? Because there's no long pair of hydrogen here. So, 0. So, you will see formal charge is equals to 1 minus 1 is equals to 0. The formal charge is 0. So, we need to say the net electric charge is 0. So, this is completely balanced or polarized okay why polarized because positive one of hydrogen and then the charge of oxygen so there's a polarization okay and it's very clear because it's zero or else if it is not zero how can it become neutralized or polarized okay another thing is we need to determine the total number of electrons here Okay, total number of electrons, how can we solve that one? Okay, OH, negative. Okay, now, if you compute for the total electrons, this is an, uh, another technique. If you, if you compute for the total electrons, mga palang, kaya naramat ay laring katong dito sa kuan, doon yung tanga, electrons, mga naanarita to, electrons is equal to the protons minus the charge. That's another thing, ha? Here is another thing because we involve magod sa mga chemical banding. Katunga computation is ano to siya, diretsyo, diretsyo. Not necessarily will, have, will make the chemical banding. Okay? Like that. So, OH will be the oxidation number of oxygen. So, ibungkag ni mo siya. So, oxygen. So, oh, balance electrons of oxygen. Oh, ganon. Six. Then, times subscript. Wala. Okay, so ano na siya dito guys? Ang imong total number of electrons computation, if you have a compound or atomic and ion, you have to uh, individually separate each element and get the electrons. And after the total that electrons, so that will be your total number of electrons in your chemical banding. Since in OS there, is, there are oxygen and hydrogen, so you will say, uh, you know, the valence electrons in the outermost shell of oxygen, which is 6, as I told you over and over again, Times the subscript of oxygen. Okay, wala masyay subscript. So, times 1 lang siya. Okay. In hydrogen, balance electrons, it happens that equal as in charge 1. 1 times 1. Because there's no subscript of hydrogen also in the chemical formula of hydroxyl group. Or hydroxyl functional group. So, what's this? So, we have 7 plus 1 is equals to 8, right? Get the point, mga palangga? 7 plus 1 is equals to 8. Oh, ganon. Mm. Ganon. So, there are 8 electrons. 
count that in your chemical bonding here. It, it is 8 so that you can confirm that this is really polar or not. Okay, count the electrons. This total number of electrons are not necessarily shared or not. You will need the electrons in the full coverage of your chemical bonding. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Mm -hmm. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, now. Seven rasha, the break siya, di ba? Okay, ang total number of electrons, eight ba yan siya mga palangga? And it connects to our uh, issue that we need to prove why negative ang charge sa OH. Okay? Again, i-count niyo ang kuan. There are five unshared electrons, right? So, count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, where is the other one? Because this is 8 electrons. Okay? So, dilig siya mo match when you compute the total number of electrons and the chemical bonding will never match. So, what will happen for this? Okay? You need to subtract 1 electron. Okay? From the total coverage of this. And put a bracket. That's why you put negative 1. Because that is basing on the total number of electrons. Because if you make the chemical bonding, it's perfectly done already. But you are wondering why, after you compute the total number of electrons, there's missing one electron. It will never match. So the one missing electron, because that's missing, when you miss something, that is negative. When you lose something, that is negative, right? It's taken away from you. All taken away from you by common sense that is negative already from you. Okay, since this is okay, taken away, okay, because we miss one electrons, we need to put this electron one only to the outside of this OH. That's why it will become OH negative one. So, so you can answer now. For sure, the question in the future will say, explain why the charge of hydroxide ion is negative one. And I didn't want to show the same explanation because blah 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 so and so of the chemical bonding we will give it to the electrons and the number blah, 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 blah. so is a is a answer is a answer and a and your instructor will give 10 points 20 points like that because it can never happen in, it will never be happening in the board examination because as I told you over and over again the choices are all multiple choice multiple choice so no need to ex explain no need to enumerate no need to sketch, no need to define, no need to describe like that. Okay, so meaning to say it's really guessing, guessing, chuba chu chu. Okay, something like that. If you're not lucky, you will be not lucky. Of course, if you are lucky, then you are lucky. I'm joking. If you are lucky, then you will pass. If you're not lucky, you will fail. 50 50, something like that. Okay, so. It's better to have this kind of examination, a very detailed examination, right? There is essay, there is true or false, multiple choice, listing, enumeration, describe, define, explain. So, para makita ang katag. Okay? You get the point. Because others will judge like this. Oh, well, he passed, I'm good than him. Okay, so let's do the, you know, comprehensive test. <laughs> and let's see who among us is good, <laughs> right? Okay, but we don't want to, you know, to do that, right? Okay. Just be thankful of what you have, uh, what the Lord has given you, and that's enough. You get the point? Okay, so like this. Okay, very clear. The negative one will go there, and this is a polar covalent bond. Okay, again, because there is a movement of the electrons, specifically by sharing the electrons with each other. Ganon. Sa OH. Number three. Ako napapasang, guys. Ganon. Ang sabi ni number three, uy, charo. Kaloka. So, if we have hydrochloric acid, we have also hydrofluoric acid. Because fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine belongs to the same group. Group 7A is, are these elements all about? There are, they are halogenes or halide. 
We remain halide, we are talking with a charged negative one. We remain of halogen, we are talking them as a non-metal only. There's no charge or existing in their neutral form. For example, if I say chlorine, I don't put charge yet. I don't also put subscript. Okay? Meaning to say, this is a halogen. Okay? Then if I will put negative one, I will say this as a halide. Okay? Now, if I will express that in this way, if I will explain, I will say, these are the halides. Ganon. So I will put the chloride, fluoride in my words that comes out in my mouth. Because if I will say chlorine, bromine, like this, and I will say halide, group, that will be chemistry wrong grammar. Because halide meaning there's negative one charge. If I was just only belong to the halogen group, so it's fine. I will say chlorine, bromine, iodine. If I will say halide group, and I will say chlorine group, that's wrong. Because halide is to be expressed as chloride, iodide, fluoride, bromide, like that. Okay? So it's referring to the charge na talaga siya. If we speak about halide terminology. Okay, so to be safe, use the halogen terminology, halogen group. <laughs> I think na makamagot akong charge yung machucho. Now, if I will put Cl2 as a diatomic chlorine, okay, what is this? Without the charge also. This is a diatomic chlorine gas. The rule says, if you put two subscripts in a halogen group okay not a halide imagine not a halide halogen group if you put subscript of two of all halogens in the group 7a then that will become a gas okay so cl2 f2 br2 i2 so these are all gases na talaga siya now from solid it will become a gas. Okay? Like that. So this will become now Cl2. F2. Br2. Originally. Okay? Not yet reacted. Not yet combined. Again, the charge is zero. The same as saying also in halogen, na chlorine lang siya, the charge also is zero. Okay? In chemistry, if no putting at the top of the chemical formula, whether it is an element or a compound that's understood to be a neutral compound or a neutral element. Meaning to say, there's a charge of zero as your oxidation state equivalent or oxidation number of the entire compound or the entire element. So your zero there generally as a charge, specifically as an oxidation state or oxidation number like that. And then more specifically, it is called a neutral charge or a neutron okay so all neutral compounds and neutral element the charge is always zero okay for example if i have questions in the future like this what is the charge of chlorine as simple as that your answer will be zero because it is a neutral element ah, it hasn't reacted yet it hasn't under the chemical bonding yet it doesn't combine it chemically to other substances or elements or other compounds. So your charge will be zero. And then if it, the question will be revised, what is the type of particle is that? Ah, for example, what is the type of particle found in chlorine? So you, you, you may confuse because there's also proton, there's also uh, electron like this. But take note, the, the sentence is expressing only chlorine. Okay? Meaning, a halogen existent based on the terminology. So, you will say neutron. Because neutron is zero charge when it is uh, chlorine, chlorine. In its natural form, not yet reacted, not yet combined, not yet charged. Okay? So, your answer will be neutron. And the choices will be normally neutron, proton, electron, like that, like that. Okay? Positron. What else? Whatever type of particle is the photon, something like that. And your answer will be neutron, ha? Huh? All the time, neutron will be not sharp. Okay. So now, if it will become charged, that you will say, ah, that's a proton already. Because there's a plus putting. If I will put, say, uh, hydrogen plus, uh, this is now a proton. Okay? Not a neutron. It will naman put siya zero. And aside from that, gibutang naman ako ang 
plus jud sa tumoy. If I will never put do sa zero, that's not true. Diba? Kung magibutang, so that's proton. So, meaning to say, the proton and electrons dependent when you write that as a charge. But neutron, it doesn't dependent on that. Okay? So, therefore, we can say all elements in the periodic table are all neutral. Okay? It has a charge of zero originally. Okay? So, don't be confused because it's very important the calculation of the oxidation number and oxidation state in our topic of the oxidation and reduction chemical reactions. Okay, so we, we should take note of that because how can we balance the electrons and the charges if we don't have that uh, theory regarding that? Okay, something like that. So, existing as a chloride, chlorine, and chlorine gas. And chlorine. That's why from solid, it will become a liquid sometimes. Sometimes it will become a gas because of the behavior of this halogen. Okay, like that. And they are all electronegative. Higher electronegativity. Meaning they are very, very thirsty to accept the electrons from the metals. Okay? Then ilos majud per mini metals ang yang electrons. Because he don't need it. Because he is metal, metal, he likes positive only, which which are the protons. Okay, kaban teka sa mga positive jud per mini. Muna ihatak niya kami dito sa nila ni Kuro because he don't want too much, uh, you know, positive charge. Like that. So, ilos niya. Muna ang, ang metals are undergoing a process of oxidation because they always lost their electrons. And the, and then this electronegative non-metals or the halogen will always accept that electrons. So, they are highly electronegative. Something like that. That's the point. So, that's the basic theory for the uh, chlorine group or the halogen group. Chlorine group, akong ikaw na chlorine group, kaya siya yung pinakasikat ang chlorine uh, for this group. Okay? Diba? Sikat niya sila ako, pero ang chlorine yung ginagamit per me. Why? Because we need chlorides to survive. You know? Chlorides or chlorine. Because it is fortified in a sodium chloride. The salt, we need that to put in our food to make that sound tasty or salty like that. That's why chlorine is the most popular of this group. Diba? Chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine, name it. Chlorine is the most popular because we need that in our digestive, you know, chemical reactions, synthesis, synthesis reaction in the production of the digestive fluid. Very used for the digestion process. Without sodium chloride, we, can, we cannot produce hydrochloric acid, which is the digestive acid. Then how can our food will be digested if there's no HCM? Okay. HCL is the natural acid found in the digestive system. Its purpose is for digestion and breaking down some toxins in the in, uh, small and large intestines. Now, if we don't take salty substances, how can we have digestive acid? Okay, for the digestion process, then we will never go to urine. There's no digestion. There will be no wastes removed because there's no digestive acid. There will be, there will, there will be no breaking down of this food due to this acid. Okay? Like that. Get the point, mga palangga. So, that's acid's function. Neutralize with siya sa mga substances. The only difference is that we take more of it. That's why it will become fat, it will become obese, because the, the sodium chloride level supposedly we intake are more than the level to what is the requirement of our uh, natural susceptibility. You know, susceptibility, uh, tolerance, because each individual have salt tolerance or leveling only according on the requirement of our immune system. Because if it is more than already what is required in our immune system, then that's not that's bad. We put too much salt in our food like this, and then we will because salt also uh, triggers obesity. Okay, too much salt. That's why junk foods are not allowed to eat daily daily adapted because it fortifies with too much salts. Okay. Junk foods, okay, you know the 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 what's the other? The you know the fish crackers, the chickpea, okay, the 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 lace, you know the lace, the potato chips or whatever. These are junk foods, meaning foods that have no nutrients. Okay, meaning we enjoy only due to the taste. Okay, since we need HCl for digestion, we need sodium chloride. You get the point. Okay, so that's why we have neutralization reaction. Get point, you get the point mga palaga, kung hitan mo, na siya may tabo. 
Okay? So that's why we put, we put aside from saying that it, need, it needs to add the, the good taste, we need really acid for the conversion of certain toxins inside our body and acid will be a lot help for that. Okay? Or else your metabolism will be poor. Okay, metabolism. The process of converting larger molecules into smaller molecules to be released outside our body through excretory system. Those excretory system. Oh, diba? Ito diba naman ito siya ito mga uh, kidney. Magandang ganon. Ito remove the liquid. Ganon. The, an the anus. Ito remove the human waste. The, you know, the mouth also. Because we can remove the carbon dioxide. Okay. Carbon dioxide also is a waste in the inhalation process. We take in the oxygen, we give out the carbon dioxide. Okay? So we need to say our mouth also is one of the uh, point of excretory. Okay? And also our eyes because, you know, we remove the tears in our eyes. The tears also compose of some toxins also aside from the electrolytes. Okay? Mga ganun siya. Okay? Ito po mga palangga na ma-remove ito mga uric acid. Uric acid. You need, you know that, uh, bilirubin, gan -ganan, creatinine, it will be removed in your uh, urine, together with your urine, something like that also. You get the point. So, but normally, human waste means a large percentage of removal of the substances. Okay, and then also the urine, of course. Okay, mga palangga, na siya metabo. Okay? So, muna siya yung metabo na we need to recurrent yun ang sikat sa halogen family. Now, going back to our number three. Dere ni kay fluorine man. Ako rin itong relate ang fluorine. Okay, alam mo siya. Hydro... Okay, hydrofluoric acid. Okay. We are not... We are, I'm not using hydrofluoric acid because uh, common naman kaya siya. So, hydrofluoric acid. Okay. Like this. So, hydrogen, one electron, mga palanda kong hitad. Okay. Now, I will tell you something. Okay. Hydrogen is a positive one. Okay? Okay, positive one, which is a proton. Now, it will be confusing why he will give the electrons. It will just become an electron when he shared this proton. Di ba makalibo ko sa high? Okay. This positive one of hydrogen is a proton. Okay. When you put H plus here, proton is siya ha. It's not neutron, it's not electron. It will become an electron when it will be lost out from him. You get the point? That's why electrons are lost. We will never say proton. Proton are being shared or being... Because it will become an electron when it becomes shared or given up. So, nana siya actions or processes, operations, task, activity. When we say it will now become an electron. Aside from putting that as negative directly in our chemical act, it will become an electron starting from proton. Okay? Diba? Makalibo ko sa high kung sige na lang. Okay? Like that. Diba? Kaya hydrogen, group 1A man siya. So there's positive 1. Right? Positive 1, charge meaning also positive 1 proton. Okay? Since it's in group A, meaning the valence electrons is one because this will be shared later on during chemical reaction chemical bonding the soy that term now converted to electron upon sharing so the loss of electrons not the loss of proton or not the loss of a charge okay when you say it in your explanation your discussion you will say loss of electrons you will you will never also say loss of oxidation number loss of oxidation state Okay, you will never say loss of proton. You will never say loss of neutron. No, it's not like that. Always electron is the basis. That's why we have electronic configuration. That's why we have electronics gadget. Okay? The term there is electron, not protonic gadget, not neutronic. Or else it will become electron, it will become neutronic. Okay? It will become protonic. But why electronic? Because electrons are the basis foundation for that when we say. Because through the electronic configuration, electrons are being transferred, how active they are, how they can conduct electricity, how, the, how sometimes they act as an insulator, something like that, never respond to electricity, how high is their thermal conductivity, something like that, or how, how weak they are 
to respond with the electricity or the electrons flow in a wire or whatever. So that's why electronics are the basis. Electrons talaga siya, guys. Okay? Not protons. Okay? Ganon. That's why we have the gadgets driven by electrons. Electrons of the metals. Okay? Anything. Okay? The all materials around us are, are driven by electrons. Okay? Not the proton, ha? Okay? Because mag-share-share ko, which I did do. And there's no chemical reaction for you, guys. If there's no electron sharing, mother God, you ba-chuchu. Okay? You got the point? Dili siya, dili ang proton. Para makasabot ng tanga, hindi siya nila siya yung proton d'yon. Charap. Okay? Ganon. Okay. Now, kahit kami si proton, bigaon ako si electron, bigaon kayo siya. Okay? If you try to to put this in a person, wala siya klaro ang uyab. Masigil siya siyang panguyab, uglain na. Tutuyok siya dito sa outer mosque siya. Bigaon kaayo. Whereas si proton o si neutron, kuha na sila, jowa na the center of the nucleus. They don't have to go outside like that, blah, blah, blah. Si electron, bigaon ka, sige, susuroy. Natun, mo react siya sa mga kuhan rin. Nila, may chlorine, may chlorine, may chlorine. Kasi asa na siya, uwagon ka siya. If you try to put this as a person, si electron, uwagon, bigaon. Okay? You get the point? Kasi asa na siya suroy. Because gaan man kay siya, kuhan na gani yung mass, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. So, liquid siya ma, liquid siya magmutang. Kung si kato lang yung kamot, yung tiib, si kasa lang siya suroy, ganon! Until such time, mabuntis siya, mga anak, o magpropagate na puglain mga bata. Muna sa nagkik mga compounds na mag-produce tungkol niya elektron, di lakon kib, si kasa lang siya mag-transfer. Si kasa lang siya mag-react, si kasa lang siya mag-shared. Okay, if, na magkasalamat po tayo elektron sa inyong pagkabigaon. Because if, if there's no such like that, then we don't have materials around us to be used to survive. <laughs> o, di ba, huwag sa pala, huwag pasalamat tayo elektrons. You got the point? Ganon. Okay, going back to the example. Ito, sa akong istorya. Okay, di ba? The hydrofluoric acid, lahat ang mga kalanda. Now, which is the central atom? The hydrogen or the fluorine? Okay, they are both having one subscript. Okay, how can we identify it? Like this. Oh my gosh! Like this. You will go to the take note. You will go to the most having number of the electrons. Ganon. But in this case, the subscript is nothing, right? So you can distribute equally in this case of oh, hydrogen and fluorine. Okay. What's this? Uh, what type of chemical bond is this? Covalent, the ganon, the chuchu, whatever. Polar, the polar, the ganon. Okay? Get the point, mga palangga. Okay. So now, hydrogen, usa lagi siya. Tapos na, fluorine, pwede na gana. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 7. Ito siya, the outermost siya ng balance. Okay. Nung mga idea na, no? Polar, mani siya. Uy, we can't be able to do it. Polar, covalent band. Oh, perfect. So, for the purpose of discussion, we need to show. So, polar covalent banding hydrofluoric. Okay. Like that. Ang ganun nga pala nga ha. Okay. Now, one is sharing your one with hydrogen. Ganun. Tarilat. Ganun. So, how many? Unshared. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six unshared electrons. Hydrogen completely shared. Ganun. Okay? Diba? So, polar shaders keep inequality or unequal values of electrons. Okay, now, compute for the formal charge. Ganon, hydrogen. Sa hydrogen, di ba, one band. So, one. Minus how many being shared? Electrons, only one. And then, ganon, and shared, nothing. So, zero. So, one minus one is equal to zero. Formal charge of hydrogen in the hydroionic, uh, hydrofluoric compound is zero. Okay, formal charge. How about the fluorine? Okay, fluorine, so, like the oxidation number of fluorine is 7, right? Okay, 7. And then, how many bonded? Or, how many bond? 1 only. Diba? Okay. And share, hindi na gana. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 plus 6. Ganon. So, 7 minus, 1 plus 6 mga palangga. 7 minus 7 is equal to 0. So, klaro kayo na nag-realize siya. So there's a polarization. Polarity exists because na zero ang mga formal charge siya buto. So that we can say, polar covalent boot siya mga palangga. And then, prove it by using the electrons concept. So I need to check the total number of interest. What I'm trying to emphasize, I maximize the reasons why it is a polar covalent band. Not enough 
only for valence electrons. We need also to see the total number of electrons. Okay? Para makakabaw yung ta, so that we can understand why it become polar. Okay? Like that. So, total number of electrons, mga palaga kong hital. Okay. Total number of electrons na. Okay. HF. Okay, valence electrons in the outermost shell of hydrogen, 1. Subscript, 1, because there's nothing mentioned. Okay, plus fluorine, valence electrons in the outermost shell of fluorine, 7, because it's in the group 7A. 7. Subscript, well, it's a dimension, as in nothing, so 7 times 1. So, total number of electrons, 1 times 1, 1. 7 times 1, 7, 8 electrons. Now, now, count the electrons in your chemical bonding would be equal, meaning total number of electrons, whether bonded or not, whether shared or not. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Ipon yung klaro. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Perfect. It matches. So, your HF as a neutral compound has no charge, meaning zero. It explained my theory that all compound, it has no charge, zero. Because of this computation of the total number of electrons with regards with the valence electrons computation. Or else, if there's one here, you put one here, and it's not, it's not compensating you. It's not no, uh, matching the theory already, so there's something wrong. But here, it's perfect. Meaning, total number of electrons is 8. 8 also electrons with a shared energy in your compound. Then there's no charge at all. Okay? You got the point? This is completely shared. Mga palaga kong hitan. Okay? So, zero yun siya. Okay? Ganon. So, any question so far? This is polar covalent bond. Okay? If, try to be more perfect. So, polar covalent molecular compound. But it's okay na kung nalang siya yung polar. Basta nalang siya yung polar, sakto nalang siya. But what I'm trying to emphasize, if you are technically correct 100%, you will say polar, okay, type of the band, polar, covalent, okay, and a kind of the compound, molecular compound. But if you say polar compound, that's enough. But you will say polar molecular compound, that's enough. If you will say polar covalent compound will be enough. So there's as long as the term polar will never lost in your identification. Because this examination is more on identification, right? You will determine or identify what kind or what type of compounds are presented in the question. Okay, number four. What's this? Okay, what type of chemical bond is calcium sulfide? Chagarat. Okay, calcium sulfide. It is a molecular compound or not? Or covalent compound, whatever. Okay. Mukhaan sa ako eh. Gutom na si Giyaw Yaw mga palangga ko. Charot! But I have to finish this calcium sulfide. Okay? Mga palangga. Wala ko, nakalimot siya ko. Shout out mga kapatid, mga ati, Adel, Vivian Sara, Jim Boy, Biggie Neon. Diba? What's the meaning of color of the violet? It's called Murino, eh? <laughs> Nakaloka, it's called. Wait, it's called? Ito lang is mong ibate. Charot. Charot lang. Wait, Mali Pacquiao, bayarin natin yung 6 million na otang sa airplane. Huwag kakabayad sa ticket sa business class. Charot. Na yung nireklamo ni mo. Diba? Isinto lang yung utang na 6 million pesos sa business class sa airplane padulong sa California during the one of the basketball event there and then imungi corrupt okay going back that that's have an evidence okay before I'm talking I have that okay like that okay now going back to calcium sulfide okay like this okay now Mga palangka, the subscript is the same also. Now, identify calcium. Is this a non-metal or metal? Oh, metal palangka. Okay. Sulf, 
sol 5 because this is sol 5 actually but since this is sol of light we will say sol 4 okay sol 4 is this an metal or metal lab you go so tapong ito look ninyo sol 4 is a metal or non metal okay mga palagang kita sol 4 lab okay take note Sulfur can exist as a solid and can exist also as a gas. And then we combine that to any other base or acid, it will become also a liquid. But this liquid, chuba chuchu, is dependent na on the process of the reaction. So we will put a gas. But what I'm trying to emphasize, it can act also as a liquid. Okay? But ang closest ano niya theory, it can act as a solid and a gas. Okay. When it is a solid, it is a natural sulfur. I think the color of a sulfur is based on the laboratory. It's gonna be yellow-green or green powder sulfur. I'm not really that sure because it was very long time ago. Okay. And I could not remember also in the quantitative and qualitative chemistry. Okay. But more or less, it's in the general chemistry, laboratory, right? Okay, but I forgot. It. But based on my memory recall, it's more greenish. Greenish, yellow green, something like that, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay? With, with the point, so solid sha and sometimes a gas, okay? Now, this sul sulfur here, okay? <laughs> if you try to combine it with calcium, it will become calcium sulfide. Why I never say calcium sulfur? Di ba makalibo? Okay? Because the naming has another rule. Okay? You will never carry the same name of the element when you combine. You will change that in the last element basis. Okay? Because the point mga palangga. So now, Metal, ang calcium, group 2A. Group 2A. And this is specifically alkaline earth metal. Alkaline. So when you combine this to any solution of, let's say, uh, alcohol or let's say water, so normally this calcium will yield an alkaline solution because this is alkaline earth. All alkaline earth group metals will yield an alkaline solution, especially in water, and it, it, it proceeds to an OH chuva chuchu. So chuva hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and also the alkali also, but more on alkaline talaga siya, ha? Okay? Pira nga siya ko, ah, charges. <laughs> Two. Sarot! Sarot lang. Okay, ganon. So alkaline earth metals. Okay. And then the sulfur is obviously non-metal. Okay. Diba? Non-metal siya, guys, but it's a solid. So we need to say the form doesn't always prove the metallic character of an element or the non-metallic and metallic character of an element. Just like carbon, right? See? Sulfur in its original state in the laboratory is powder. The truth that you will say it's already a metal because that is a powder. Solid. Something like that. No, it's not. You will never judge that in the metallic character as that. The form has no connection for that. <laughs> because the point is the behavior of the reactivity has that factor for that. Reactivity, how they react, how they combine like that, blah, 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 so and so. Okay, now sulfur is a solid, it's S only. Okay, so we need to say the charge is zero, neutral or neutral, but do not, don't have to put, because it's understood. Okay, babuan ka, kabutangan mo zero per me. Okay, understood. Okay, neutral or neutral. Okay, now calcium, understood also neutral, because there's no charge zero. So don't put charge yet, okay, like that. So, ganon. So, we need to say sulfur meaning halogen. Okay. So, calcium plus sulfur halogen is equals to, now it will become calcium sulfide. Why? Okay. It carries the 
the the flagship or the banner of the halide group halide group not the halogen because if you carry the banner of the halogen group it will become calcium sulfur okay because sulfur is a halogen not a halide when i say sulfide that's a halide so it carries the flagship or the brand of the halide family not the halogen family though it exists in the same group the way the chemistry grammar holds okay you get the point so calcium plus sulfur it will become calcium sulfide so it will become a calcium sulfide then automatic you will convert the sulfur into a halide negative one okay ganon you get the point so negative one now since the partner is already a halide just to compensate that your product is a calcium sulfide you get the point what would you na calcium sulfur Okay, so calcium sulfide lang siya. So you will put also positive 2 in a calcium. So calcium positive 2 plus sulfide negative 1 will be calcium sulfide. Okay, this is how the way you say it. And this is now ionic. Okay, ionic compound. Because, because through ion. So positive 2 ion is cut ion. And negative 1 is an ion. So, ionic compound is driven by ions. There's a charge naturally. Because you already have the purpose to make it as a calcium sulfide. If I don't have that purpose, I don't have to put charge here. You get the point? So, like this. Calcium positive 2 plus sulfide negative 1 is equal to calcium sulfide. Okay? Ganon. You get the point. So, ang calcium ko, income negative 1 siya, and you will say, La, sir, wala siya mag balance. Okay, this turned to be negative 2. Okay. Kay, ano ano na siya sa ayun ni Kong Pag? Mabalance mag siya, guys. So, for example, ang suwat, because nandedelikit kasi sama na ako, wala na ako ma, I, you know, I forgot to think nga negative 2 siya because mas masarap ko ni Sulti. So, at the time I correct, ah, this is not 0, so how can it be polarized? So, I changed that negative it to negative 2 since we know sulfur is negative 2 and oxygen is negative 2 belongs to the same group. Things like that can easily be corrected because you know what you are doing. You get the point? Mm, ganan. If you don't know what you are doing, then you will never change anything to make it correct. Okay? That's the the, the, the thumb, the, the rule of thumb. Okay? Something like that. So we'll change to, to negative 2 because it belongs to the same oxygen, sulfur, and sapatogal. No ba? Okay, selenium, terelium, and I think it's going to be polonium. So, this elements group 6A. Group 6A. So, both of them are 6 valence electrons in the outermost shell. Okay, 6 valence electrons in the outermost shell. Then, why negative 2 on shell structure? Because in the octet rule, it still need 2. That's why negative 2. Because 8 electrons to satisfy the octet rule. And this is only 6 valence electrons plus 2. Then, that's why it becomes negative 2. Because negative 2 here is already considered as an electron. Because you put now as a charge. Okay? So, the theory. And if you don't talk about octet rule, mag ka. Okay? Especially kung nakalimta rin mo pag-memorize. Because our, memor uh, our memorization sometimes fail. That's why we need to understand the theory, we need to analyze the theory, how it works when we do the memorization, so that it will retain for how many years in our brain cells. Okay? Then that, it's gonna be like that. So, positive 2 ang calcium, negative 2 ang sulfur, the neutralization or polarity exists. Meaning, polarization. Uh, opposite charge. Then, the net electric charge will be zero. Okay? Electrostatic force coming from the calcium, Directed toward to the sole force, so electro electrostatic force. This is positive electrostatic force. And then the electrostatic force of sulfur also negative will also go to the calcium, AF sulfur. Now, since we have a charge of negative 2 sulfur plus negative 2, with the add, it will become 0. So our net electric charge is 0. So every compound, a unique compound, the net electric charge is always zero, driven by the combination of your electrostatic forces between the non-metal and the metal opposite charge and expected to have a polarity. 
Okay, this is a unit because of the ions driven by them. Okay, so we will say calcium sulfide is an ionic compound driven by ions. Okay, like that. So, in ionic compound, guys, the polarity and non-polarity issue is never really play an important part. Though you know that this is already, okay, polar, right? You will never say polar ionic compound. You will just say ionic compound because the polarity and the polarity will make a, a great contribution only in molecular compound, okay, or covalent bonding. This is ionic compound, again. In ionic bonding or chemical co uh, ionic compound, the issue of polarity and unpolarity has not been considered when you say it in public <laughs> or when we write that in a book. But it's still also a, a theory behind, but we will never express that uh, as a valid way to do so or to say it or to write it. Okay? We will just adapt. We adapt, but we'll never declare. Okay? <laughs> It's possible we adapt, but we'll never declare. Meaning the declaration when you write, when you express, when you write, when you express, but it doesn't mean when you try to put that blah 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 so when you explain during your explanation what I mean. Okay? Final declaration through writing and expression, not allowed, but through your explanation to connect that, it's okay. Okay? So I will say. If it ako yung siyang tinood on, I will say polar ionic compound. But the rule says no need to attach that because that is only for usually for the molecular compound. I will just say ionic compound for calcium sulfide. You get the point? So if we meet so much, so many ionic compounds, never say polar or not polar. Though we will still have to use that through our explanations. In our Lewis dot structure here, the polarity, right? I suppose say, ah, because it's too, it's too polar. During our discussion, but uh, duration in the course of our discussion and explanation, connect the theory. But in our final declaration in writing and expressing, we cannot do that. Okay, that's very clear. Okay, number five, magnesium oxide. Charot. Okay, diba? Magnesium oxide, mga palangga. What is that? Ionic compound, molecular compound. This discussion of ionic compound, molecular compound, sorry, nasabi na kundi na mga palangga. Molecular compound doesn't connect with inorganic compound and organic compound. Okay? Because these are classification of a compound. We are talking now types of a compound. Meaning, talking about the property, the behavior, the on category. Okay? You get the point? A general category, general classification, we will say inorganic compound, organic compound. But we are talking here the type man. So, to pa, behavior, interaction, chemical combination, how they react with each other. So, meaning types. Okay? So, what are the two types of compound? Your answer will be only molecular compound and a unique compound. If I will say, what are the two classifications of compound? Or what are the two categories of a compound? Your answer will be in organic compound and organic compound. You will say the difference, right? You will never confuse it, especially if the examination is enumeration. In the examination, let's say board examination now. Oh, there's a lot of enumeration, there's a lot of definition. Explain, define, describe, is a true or false, and a little bit mixture of identification, and also true or false. Then there's a, a whole array or a variety of type of examinations, right? Or test. Then you will say, then it's not an issue. But if it's an enumeration, it's an issue. Uh, two types of compound. You will answer in organic. So you will be wrong because I'm talking of types. Okay? You will answer in organic compound and organic compound. So, you will answer that only if the question is classification and category. But if you say types, your answer will be molecular compound and ionic compound. Be careful also with the terminology in English, okay? Something like that. Okay? For example, what are the types of chemical reaction? And saying also, what are the classification of chemical reaction? Diba? Or what are the kinds? 
of chemical reaction. It's not the same as saying what are the types of chemical reaction. Because ang types mo kung more kung sa mga properties, behavior, interaction, ganon-ganon siya ba mga di ba processes and operations talaga ang details sa type P Y P E. Okay, meaning, meaning particular kaya siya comprehensive kayo ng yung kuan yung explanation about the types. Okay, if I was say what are the two types of chemical reactions? Sa question pa lang daan sa yung na. Okay? So you will say, what are the classification of chemical reaction or two categories of chemical reaction? It's only reversible chemical reaction and irreversible chemical reaction. So, but, but when I say, what are the types of chemical reaction? There are five or six types at least. You have the uh, decomposition, combination or synthesis, double replacement, double displacement, single replacement, single displacement, and combustion or the photosynthesis. Okay, but the point, maximum of seven, but sometimes they will drop that photosynthesis. But other books stating that also, it depends on the reference, but at least maximum of five to make it parallel with several books. Okay, but sometimes no, but there are other sources have six. They include the photosynthesis, they include the combustion, but sometimes they drop out the combustion and the photosynthesis in other sources. But this five will remain. Okay, but common sense, if the question will say also, what are the seven types? Did you only include the photosynthesis and the combustion? Okay, things like that also. But if the question was not putting the number only, so then maximize so that the, the one who will check your answer will put you a lot of points. Put the photosynthesis and the combustion also better. It will add two more points to you. If the question will say, enumerate the types of chemical reaction. And you will just only put the minimum, put the maximum so that you have a lot of points. Things, mentality like this helps you to pass in the examination. Okay? You get the point, maximize talaga. Okay? You get the point and be clever in the, you know, in how it is being phrased or sentenced in a particular question. Okay? Mumatter siya guys, tapi yung mga conjunction, preposition, mga ganun-ganun. Because it matters a lot, especially in the operating conditions. When you put kama, it will be connect the other properties of the other gas. And then it, it will matter how you compute na if you understand how it is being phrased talaga. Because it matter doon pa lang sa imong analysis, how you analyze the problem. Okay? So, dapat particular ka sa, you know, sentencing, phrasing, grammar, and terminology. You have a full coverage of scrutinization and evaluation of both the numbers, the data, Okay, and the term terminology. Okay, in science, that is technical terminology. Okay, you get the point. Ganon. So, number five, magnesium oxide. Hala, what is this all about? Oh, you will separate the magnesium uh, oxide. Okay, ganon. Wala na lang kung plus, guys. Eh, ganon. Okay, yung ibutang o plus, but it's so much combined. Sa akin, extend pa bang ko? Nagigutan ko na. Okay. Ako lang sa iyo, buta na, magnesium o oxygen. Di, wala pa man ako buta yung plus sign because wala pa man ako di-react. Or else, it will never hold true na. Kung ako lang siya di-react, kung kulo sa din siya kung magnesium oxide. Explain pa man ko, di ba? Ana. Okay. So, magnesium plus oxygen. So, wala ako buta yung plus. Ha? Pwede sa siya mo dito sa ubiket. Okay. So, magnesium. Originally, is a neutral element, zero charge. So, the neutron is zero. Okay. Oxygen, as a monoatomic pa siya, not a diatomic. Oxygen lang siya, siya walay subscript. Okay? So, the charge will be zero. Neutral oxygen, neutron. Zero. Okay. We get the point. Now, imong purpose, imo siyang i-react to produce ang maling siyang oxide. So, mag-charge-charge na kanil hindi galiw na. Okay, that's the time. I will erase the zero at the top. And I will put now the sign plus. In this second version, I have to put now the charges because there's no plus na talaga siya. No charge ko. I will try them to charge. Okay? I will put magnesium. It is positive 2 na. Magutang naman ko. So, magpress plus na. Chuchu, chuchu. So, positive 2 na naman siya sa kuan. I'll say uh, group 2A, which is group 2A, yes. Alkaline earth metal group. Magutang na kong charge. Kalimti na itong mga 0,0 neutral. 
Okay, kinuha ko ito yung natural gear niya kung kinta high. Okay, oxygen. So, oxygen, namin mo na po na siya negative 2. Na nag-charge naman ta. Okay, negative 2. Ganon. Tanawar doon ang charge mga kalangga. Opposite, when you add, it will become zero. Right? So, meaning to say, the electric, net electric charge is zero. By adding each electrostatic forces among them. Okay. The electrostatic force of oxygen directed to the magnesium, EF, is negative 2. And the electrostatic force from magnesium directed to oxygen, EF, is equal to positive 2. Okay. Add. Neutralize them so that you have a polarity among them. Okay. Positive 2 plus negative 2 is equal to 0. So polarity exists because each of them is polar, opposite, charge. Okay. And then this is polarizable. <laughs> wow. Polarizable or polarity. Then, in general, both of them are neutralized. Because it is already zero. Okay. Now, since I put down the plus sign, I will now put the product. MgO. Karon pa ko ni kita ng plus kaya ang purpose ng produce makuk MgO pero sa purpose of discussion na surely wala pa. Okay. Now MgO. Okay. Di ba ni ko zero na to? Di ba? Then charge ni siya. That's why I did not put charge in the MgO. Then na connect naman ng electric. Net electric charge is zero, so I don't have to put zero as MgO. So MgO is the product of Mg positive two and negative two will be MgO as a neutral compound. Okay, then on. You get the point. So for the purpose of reduction of oxidation, you have to put zero lang siya. Okay, because the other one, you put naman ang mga positive two, mga negative two. You get the point? You get the point, mga palangga. Uh. Now, if your purpose is to balance, you need to eliminate the charges because you need to balance only. Right? But if your purpose is to va balance the electrical charges, okay, or the electrons, then you have to put the charge. Because electrons is dealing with the charges. Okay? Then if your purpose only is to balance through atoms, then you, have, you don't have to put the charges. Erase that one. Okay? Like that, but still the same product in GO. But the purpose only to balance, balance the charges is to put zero also. But if atomic balancing, we mean in chemical equation balancing is referring to atomic balancing, huh? It's not the charge is being balanced there. It's not the electrons are being balanced there. It's the number of atom only and with corresponding mole, relationship mole. Because mole is the basic unit in the amount of substance. Mole, M-O-L-E. It's also the atom. <laughs> you get the point? So, very particular. Okay. Is equal to one mo a mole, let's say, times the subscript of that individual element. So without considering the subscript, that will never be called an atom. That's still a mole. M O L E. You get the point? So if you have a subscript already, that signifies an atom theory. If you have a subscript, I will say Cl2. So I will express directly. 2 as my atom. This is not 2 moles. This is 2 atoms of chlorine. Gas. Because this L2 is a gas already as what I discussed. So we should be particular to understand things, especially in chemical calculations. You have to be particular what is an atom, what is a mole, what is a particle. Because it's in there, you can easily calculate. Guys, I told you, advantage good siya kung makasabot ka sa entire framework, sa basics ba, sa foundation. Because ang complex mo, tumara mo gano'n siya, pero nagyong kay basics, hindi man dyan mo, hindi man dyan mo, mukulaks ang bridge if the foundation is very strong. You get the point? The same as human being. If your foundation also, for example, if you're good in math, then di ka kamayago sa mga math ng mga questions because that is your foundation. But if you're also strong in science, di ka kamayago sa mga science ng mga questions because your strong foundation is science also. Then better to combine that two, then Pasok sa banga, especially if you're engineering courses. Okay, okay math din ang science ng anak, guys. Numbers of mga, kuan, mga theories and principles ang nasa engineering, not only numbers. Because I found also good in numbers, but failing to pass the word examination. I mean, a lot na, okay? Bright kasi lang math, but then hagbong sila. 
Okay? Because, what ma balance? They are not good in theories and foundations, concepts, theories and principles. Kung so lang kayo sila masol. Okay? Okay, if I'm not wrong with disclaimer, if I'm not wrong with that, then I'm going to is a math, then I'm going to score na ako. Sorry ha. Okay. Okay. That would mean lesser and ilang theories, principles, and concepts sa foundation, sa theories ba? Okay. Kung ang ganyan number one, guys, ang concepts, and theories, and principles, si Kadere naman na ang number. Okay. Data na palang yan siya to to. Data statistics is just to prove your theory and your claim and your scientific research. So, ang pinaka-parent nila dapat sabtun ang theory, ang kwanda, ang concept, ang ang niyang subject. Unsa gina siya. Kaya later na na siya ng mga computation. computation. Okay. With having that basic and solid foundation, you can solve properly. It, it's very easy to memorize formulas. But what if, if the problems change? It will be modified. Not the same as what your instructor taught you. So, it na na. So, that's a really to understand, really. Okay? Not only the mechanics how it's being solved, not only the method how it is being solved, not only the pattern. Patterning ba? Patterning kay. Mga sa dalawa ko na example. Kung makita ka ba natin, problem niya. After yan, kung mo rin siya apply. What if it will be modified? So, na na. So, we need to, you know, we need to maximize, really. And that's that's the reason we need to have uh, a wild imagination. We need to have a wild imagination sa mga scientists and sa mga engineers. Kaya na naman ginadaan ng critical thinking. Every individual have critical thinking. It's dependent, dependent na lang sa level of how critical you are or how you manage your critical thinking. But you should at least have wide imaginations to maximize your knowledge to correct the theories and principles and concepts. Ganon. Okay, number, magnesium oxide, klaro na kay siya, it is ionic compound. Okay. Number six, Oh, ganon. Ang sama ni number 6, guys, ang makalimog na po. Okay, ganon. Hindi lagi taan na sa tero. Chlorine gas. Meaning diatomic chlorine gas. Okay, like that. Get the point? Okay. Now, if I have Cl2, chemistry grammar ka, okay, Cl2, ganon. Cl2 is chlorine gas, ha? Kina may two nga subscript, meaning diatomic chlorine gas. Okay? Chlorine gas because of the subscript two. And you will see also diatomic because di means two in the prefixes in math. Okay? Tetra, mono, uh, what else? Tri, hecta, okay? Octa, ganon, ganon, ala, mona, what else, mega, giga, that is math prefixes. It's very important in chemistry. Okay, now, di is two. Okay, so diatomic chlorine gas. Because if you put two as a subgroup, automatic gas na siya tanan. Okay, ganon. Now, if I want to say diatomic chlorine, this is wrong. Because chlorine is not yet a gas, then why you say that it's diatomic? Then you have to remove the two. Then you will never say diatomic anymore. Monoatomic chlorine. Right? Because there's no subscript two. Monoatomic chlorine is just Cl. The one we usually say C in the periodic table is a monoatomic chlorine. But we don't have to say that every time because that's already understood that it is a chlorine, meaning one atom of chlorine. One atom meaning mono. So mono atomic chlorine. I don't have to put the one because we've done that already. I have to say uh, mono atomic chlorine or one atom of chlorine reflected in your periodic table. It's not the diatomic chlorine gas because diatomic is Cl2. And that is a gas, not naturally as a solid. But reflected in your periodic table is naturally as a non metal okay as i told you it doesn't really project the form with a solid or liquid just as long as it is a non-metal naturally is that the point and you can prove that in a laboratory if somebody will buy the chlorine <laughs> right we need to confirm through seeing that really but by having the theory itself so, we know that that is a non-metal okay 
And then the actual one, you can, ah, this is a solid. Oh, ganun. Because you see in your eyes. Okay? But here, we interpret here in the periodic table as a ah, non-metal and metal. Not necessarily confirming the form or phase unless you see that by your eyes. Okay? You get the point. Though we can see the, met the metallic character only, the metallic character, the metallic character. Okay, something like that. So the chlorine here, what we mean is non-metal. Okay? Regardless with the form or phase, it is solid or liquid across. So normally, it's gonna be powder. Solid. But non-metal. Okay, because it's a wrong concept, man, to say if you see a so solid powder, you will say already metal because there's a solid. That's why I'm trying to escape in my examination. Maybe you will uh, interpret that it is already a metal because that is a solid form. No, it's not all the time like that. As I told you, it depends on the behavior, the nature, the characteristic. For example, I have mercury. Mercury is solid in natural form, but at certain temperature, it will become liquid. That's why we can never say all the time, nga, it's metal solid. You get the point? Uh, at room temperature, for example, at 25 degrees Celsius, at ambient temperature, like that, this mercury will turn into liquid. No, nobody touches that. Okay? It's only the natural temperature with the planet Earth. You get the point? Things like this. Okay? Uh, this mercury is about in getting the about blood pressure of the human being. Okay? Something like that. Mercury. Use mercury in that because mercury is a metalloid. that exists as a liquid can exist as a solid on that temperature basis. Okay, De dependent on the temperature basis. Okay, something like that. So, muna siya itong ginikayan. Charot! Okay, now number 16. Kung ano siya, guys? An example, chlorine gas. Okay? Now, na parenthesis siya na chlorine to chlorine bond. Kaya naman siya dash. Okay? Get the point. Now, may mga tanong. Kaya naman siya. Chlorine gas. Oh, ganon. Okay, ah, mo critical thinking, mo wide imagination tayo yung tapa makasagot. Ano mo judan ng kuan? Ang, ang, you know, ang nature sa engineers, mo wide imagination tayo dahil dahil kaya mo kasi brain cells ba? Na mo come out mga numbers, mga words. Ni imo na siyang justify technically by data, by computations, ganon, by theories. Mo judan na siya ang complete package of being an engineer. Okay? Get the point. Not only sa mga yaw 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 sa mga when you yaw yaw, imo siya na i-equal sa yung brain cells, sa mga numbers, sa mga formulas, imo siya i-prove, we validate yung kimona siya, ang total package of being an engineer. Okay, now, we got, we have here uh, chlorine gas, or let's say chlorine gas, na sila ito na tayo siya mga palangga, di ba? Iniingan po ka nga, chlorine to chlorine bond. Okay? Will this be the same? Or not? Hala. <laughs> Diba? Diba? Kalibog, no? I-apply din ito ang algebra. Math. Math. Algebra. Five units in our first day college. Five units or three units? Mag-math dahil tayo nilinigay na. We apply the math in chemistry. Or in science. Okay. Diba? Chlorine gas. Okay. Guys, naghanap siya paagi. Okay. Ang chlorine gas, you will say like this. Chlorine plus chlorine. Right? Then you will interpret that chlorine subscript 2. Is that true or not? Okay, chlorine plus chlorine is equals to Cl2 gas. How come, okay, how come the solid form, let's say, will form a gas after adding? <laughs> That's your first question. How can the solid to solid when you add that one, will become a gas. Okay? You get the point? Ganon. So, in this case, we need to declare the phase in the subscript. Subscript, it is S, solid, L, liquid, something like that. To compensate with your chlorine gas here. Because this is purely a gas. Specify magun siya. Ganon. O, diba? So, chlorine plus chlorine kasi ang tumuma na siya, guys. It is wrong. Okay? You need to say, chlorine plus chlorine is 2 chlorine. Sa math. 
ang tunay nga asa coefficient. Di ba? Kaman tayo kami kamu plus tap variable nga x. Ano yung personal? x plus x is equals to 2x. The same as chlorine plus chlorine is equals to 2 chlorine. So the 2 will be put in the side of chlorine. You get the point? Ganon. So, if that is the case, mga palangga, kung hitad, kung siya may tabo, then what can you say si L2, mga palangga? Okay, ganun nga naman na siya. Okay? So, this is natural. You don't have to explain. Okay? You don't have to explain that you add chlorine plus chlorine, may mo siyang chlorine gas. No, it's not. Because Cl2, as I told you, it is natural. It's a type of a natural gas coming from a halogen family. Okay, the Cl2. Okay, we exist with chlorine as a chlorine itself. Chlorine gas Cl2 and a chloride negative one. Tulo siya ka-form ba ang chlorine? Okay, because halogen na siya. Okay, yung mga 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 chlorine plus chlorine, yung mga two chlorine. Yung nagibutang ang to sa kilid ha. Wala sa subscribe. Eh, kung nasa subscribe ang CL2, uh, natural na na siya. It doesn't have to add, add chlorine lagi. Automatic na siya chlorine gas. Okay? Get the point? Okay. Now, when you say chlorine to chlorine bag, what, what does it mean? There's a dash and hyphen. Meaning to say, this is only chlorine plus chlorine na katong walay charge. Okay? Walay negative ba? Dili halay. Ang gimin ani. Kundi as a halogen chlorine. Nga, chlorine plus chlorine. Meaning the, the charge is zero. Neutral chlorine. Okay? Naka na ato nakita sa mga laboratory. Natural pa lang siya ba? Wala pa siya mga reaction. Okay? So, muna siya gimin sa chloride, chlorine to chlorine band. Wala na siya kalabutan sa chlorine gas. Okay? Oh, Sabta na ninyo, ninyo. So, chlorine gas, it doesn't have to connect with the chlorine to chlorine band. Okay? Because chlorine to chlorine band, na, chlorine nga yung dash sa center of sa other chlorine, CL ba? Ma ang put pa sa buti na is a band only between one, one chlorine atom plus another one chlorine atom. Okay? Like that. Okay. Now, kung ma-express data, sa tupag guys, kung ma-express data sa periodic table, we are basing in the atom. We ever say, one atom of chlorine. Meaning, there's no subscript. Now, if you try to force that one, na natin siya subscript, mahimo siyang gas ang chlorine. We say L2. So, you will see now, two atoms of chlorine gas. Because, subscript to times one atom of chlorine originally. So, two atoms of chlorine gas. That's why, diatomic. Something like that. But if there's no mention of the atoms here, just, just one only, you will say one atom of chlorine gas or one atom of chlorine. Okay? You get the point. So we need to say all elements in the periodic table are expressed in atoms, not in moles. M O L E S. Can I? Even though we say in chemistry that mole is the basic unit of the amount of substance. But it doesn't mean that that is the declaration in our periodic table. It's in terms of atoms talaga siya. Okay. Now, how can we signify that? Because there's an atom, there's a mole, there's a particle, there's a molecule. How can we do that? Now, Mr. Amadio Avogadro, in the, I think it's 17th century, discovered really to make it understand more. Okay, through data analysis, numbers, or formulas. So he used now to differentiate not only by words, because, right, but we have theory. Theory ex expressed in a statement. Words. Okay, this is scientific theory, or scientific postulation, scientific theorem is just the same, or scientific principle, or scientific concept. These terms are only the same through statements and paragraphs. But when we say, Scientific law is another story because if you need a scientific law that would be based on the numbers, data, formulas, and standards, you will see a lot of constants and a lot of numbers. So basically, we will say scientific law is essential to obtain a scientific research or a scientific study, a scientific theorem, a scientific principle, a scientific concept. 
Because scientific law is driven by numbers, formulas, equations. So we can never say a scientific law if it is only a statement. In science, not the same with taking up law or political science. Because the law there doesn't involve numbers. Only words. Reasoning, explanation, article number, blah, blah, blah. Republic Act number, blah, blah, blah. Okay, series of blah, blah, blah. Okay, what, uh, executive order, blah, blah, blah. House bill number, blah, blah, blah. Article number, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this, this doesn't involve formulas, right? And equations to make that one. So, but that is a law. But as a scientific law in science, there's equations, formulas, data, numbers, constants, and a lot of operating conditions to satisfy your theory or your scientific research. Okay? So, can you shut down, guys? Under me siya sa scientific research. Okay. We will have the scientific method. Okay? Scientific method. Okay? We have scientific law. Okay. Scientific law. Okay. Before coming to scientific law, you have the scientific research, study, principles, concepts, theories. But you use, you use a lot of scientific method. Methods. Okay? So what are the scientific methods? Muna to atong mga observation. Gather data is the first step to become a scientist. Gather data. And the scientist has a quality of being observant first. Okay? If you don't have the quality of being observant, you will never you will never become a scientist. Because this is the first step of your scientific method. Okay, number two, you will develop your level of inference. Okay. When you observe, you explain why based on what you observe. Right? So if you do that, you have an inference, then that's the time a scientist must have a critical thinking. Okay, because every time when he observes, he will explain, oh, why is this like this? He always ask why and how. Okay, that's why being a critical thinker, the questions how and why must be there during your inference. Okay, the step number two. Okay, the step number three, okay, since you need to explain further, okay, you need to have hypothesis. Because Sometimes may be wrong, sometimes may be correct, based on your critical thinking. And then you will neglect the, the wrong and the error and you will retain the correct one based on your critical thinking. Because it doesn't mean if you are a critical thinking, you don't achieve wrong or error. You still have that because you have a wild imagination, as I told you, to become a scientist and to become an engineer. Okay, now you have a hypothesis, you're, you're educated guess whether it is validated to be correct or to be precise or to be wrong or not or accepted or not. So hypothesis. Okay. Number four, you have now your backup theory through your scientific law. So that's the time you need to do a lot of measurements. Okay. Through experiments. Okay. In the laboratory or through gathering surveys. If that is a math, scientific research, math, but related to math. No need to go into the laboratory or no need to, to go to the sample. The sampling there is more on the interview of the people, survey, like that. So this is also part of your scientific law. We will link that to the other research, okay? So it, it's more on data, numbers, formulas, equations. And this is the point where, for example, if this is related to, to politics, polit political analyst will be there. Okay, if this is related to more on the social media or, you know, internet world or social media, data scientist will be there. Okay, data. They are scientists referring to data. Now, if this is more on chemistry, that's where chemists will be there, physicists will be there, astronomers will be there. Okay, just to have your scientific law or data to prove. And the last will be your conclusion. Okay, your generalization and your summary basing on your overall study in your scientific research. But it doesn't have to be scientific to others. You will just put that as a research or a thesis or a feasibility study. 
but I, I put just scientific because we are dealing here in my discussion about science or chemistry. So I, so I put scientific research. I describe the type of research I have. Then if your topic is, not, is all about politics, math, you don't have to put scientific in your adjective, in your research. You just put research, blah, 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 so and so about, okay, thesis about blah, 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 so and so, feasibility study about so and so. Since this is science <laughs> related, so that's why I put scientific research. But the same pattern you will be able to use in the observation, gather data, interference, okay, uh, hypothesis and summary. It's just the same technique you will be able to do in your other research also. Okay, now sampling is the best for that sampling, meaning solace. Okay, you need to ask questions, interviews, record that everything, blah, 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 so and so. Okay, for example, if it is politics out of 50 million voters, you need to gather, you have to sample out of 800 and you will be able to use probe and stop, probability and statistics. Okay, for that. The possible outcomes, what will be happening, that's a uh, subject in engineering also, right? Probability and statistics, but I doubt others have this subject, I think have also, right? Okay, so it's very important. Now, to come up with a real, reliable statistic, we need to connect that in previous stuff. Meaning, previous statistics and BS mathematics are very good at this point time, in time. BS mathematics, BS math. Bachelor of Science majoring in Mathematics. Okay, you have to connect the previous, you know, pattern of the math or the statistics. I am referring to politics. Okay, now for example, uh, no, this is logical. Uh, this is not uh, magawa away tatungos ako. Um, let's just do it scientifically and theoretically. If we have records in the past, for example, uh, presidential survey, and then, for example, in the Philippines, if we have Iraq, if we have Ramos. If we have Gloria Matapatal Arroyo, something like that. If the trending is just the same, okay, according to the data scientist, because this is internet. For example, in 1998, 30% Iraq up above in the survey, in online survey or in actual survey. And then in 2010 something, until Tunoy Noy Aquino, okay. Uh, against their competitors, they obtain a uh, highest percentage. Now, if we do the proof and start subject, okay, the graphical representation is rising or escalating. Of course, the non-math professionals will never accept this. Non-math, meaning their courses are psychology, their courses are more on, not engineers, what I mean. They will not believe this proof and start because they, they don't have a subject like this. Okay, or something. Oh, there are also have, they, they believe because they are open minded. Okay, they are wide back. Not sarado yung utak nila. They, they also know and they are also smart professionals, even though they are not math or science graduates or engineering graduates. They are just smart. Okay, so they can understand and open minded, but there are also people who are close minded. They are not related to science and math. They cannot understand this. Okay, now this is proof and stuff. Probability and statistics, and this is one kind of mathematics subject in engineering apart from algebra, trigonometry, differential calculus, integral calculus, the advanced engineering mathematics, the, you know, the differential equations. So this proof and stuff is also a math, okay? Math based on numbers, not on statements, not on words. Now, during your sampling and survey, you have gathered everything there and then in the time so let's say uh ramos era era went over judy Venetia, something like that in 1998 and here comes the, and the trending is going up until go to the duterte okay duterte also in his survey got most of the time 40 percent 38 percent higher than the other competitor okay now today 22 okay the graphical representation showing the data going up and BBM shows 60% up. Would you believe that these others will win based on math? Okay, not on opinions, not on views, not on statements, not on words. Because all people have views, all people have opinions. We will be quarreling by views, opinions, hated speech because we don't have principles in life, the same principles in life. 
we, we don't have the same perceptions, we don't have the same mentality, we don't have the same behavior, we don't have the same character, or we don't have the same understanding, we don't have the same knowledge. But math, we should be aligned because of this number. Okay? Everybody will align to it, even though we don't have the same opinions, character, behaviors. Because that is mathematics, mga palangga. That is measurable. Highly measurable. Okay? So, if the trending is going up during the BBM time 60%, so, he will win through math, ha? Huh? Through math, probability and statistics, not through statements, okay? Not through words, through math, BBM will win based on statistics, okay? Math, numbers, percentages. Now, if he will never win, so people will think there's another strategy through fraud, F-R-A-U-D, because the math fails, okay? Guys, math never fails because that is measurements, okay? Percentages, okay? It will never fail. It will just only fail if there's something wrong. How they operate, the ballot boxes, the, vo the voted counting machines, the smart math. And that's another story. Disclaimer, I'm just talking about the math. Based on the math, BBM will win. Based on the numbers, BBM will win. BBM Sarah will win. But if they win in the 2022, there, there must be another reason for that. Okay? Labas na po, Anna. <laughs> because I'm only highly theoretical, highly technical on the issue. Not based on views, opinions, okay? Philosophy, ideology. Because we differ in that. We don't have the same character and personality. We don't have the same knowledge. We don't have the same level of understanding. But math atong isgutan dere. Mag-align yung dapat. Okay? Because 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. And you are really 4. You get the point? If I will say three up, uh, twelve divided by three, the answer is four. You will answer three. No, it's not. So the same thing is also proven discussed in that survey. Okay, like that. Okay, thirty percent, forty percent, and uh, you know, and the graph is rising, and there's no way it will be down. Imagine next month na ang election. Okay, sixty percent na sila daan. Don't tell me how pa ang twenty percent. If mo mahabol siya, I'm thinking critically. We are thinking critically here based on math. Okay? We don't base on anything. Based in math, they will win. Okay? Ganon. Because we don't have the same ideas and opinions. Okay? Okay? We are dealing with numbers and data to prove the count, uh, to prove and to account the validity of our claim and our hypothesis. Hypothesis pa man siya. Guys, wala pa may conclusion. Wala pa may nidaog. Okay? By the time mo daog na si DBM, that's the time Math is really correct. And our hypothesis is really correct. Is something wrong? So, they deviated with the math. Something wrong other than the math. And you know now already. So, it's cheating and fraud. Okay. Anak siya. Because why? Based on previous history, it will never be the same. From 1998, 2010, 2016, Okay, and 2022, the survey is goes like that. If you have really high scores over the other competitors, you will win in the final voting. But why not not follow the pattern? There's something wrong. <laughs> Diba kay math baya siya? Okay, mao na siya, guys. Okay, so measurable magud ang math and science. Highly measurable. Not based on opinion. Not based on views. Not based on conviction. Your own conviction as a person. Not based on perception. Not based in mentality, not based in character, okay? Not based in behavior, not based on what you believe is correct according to your own contention, okay? So we need to say math and science all will agree. Ganon, diba? Oh, mo na siya, guys. Sorry talaga ha, sa mga kakampings. Mamang ko na akong understanding. I'm just highly, highly technical and highly theoretical. Okay, something like that. Okay, number seven. Wala pa kita sa chlorine gas. Ang saan mo nito pag chemical band? Ang chlorine gas na ito. Chemical band. Nakalo pa. Okay. Saan mo nito pag... Kung guys, uy, yung higayo na. Okay, mga talaga, umitad. Saan mo nito, guys? So, mukha ko sa pagkabush. No? Pero nata yung nutrients. Ang saan nito sa kabush? May take nothing. I have nothing, nothing, nothing. 
Ganyan. Iba nga pala sa kumitahan. Oh, hello. Hello, guys. I'm alive na alive si Junjun. Stay tuned. Mabalik ako sa mga explanation sa chlorine gas. Napatay lima kay tabi. Ano kayo kuno? Huwag yun lima kung ma-discuss ang chlorine gas, HDR, iodine bromine, ito ang carbon monoxide. See you later. Ganon. Charot. Diba? Diba?